Welcome to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX and online at MyWithersRadio.com featuring the Waltonville Spartans, Weber Township Trojans, and Woodlawn Cardinals. The Jefferson County Basketball Showcase is presented by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. The Jefferson County Basketball Showcase is also sponsored in part by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. The Collision Pros at Cesar Auto Body, Newell Furniture, and the General Store in Woodlawn. Red Lake College. It's time. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu. And by Coach House Garages, Ford Square, King City Chrysler. You can count on us. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. State Farm agent Scott Owens. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And People's National Bank. With the Coach House Garage's pregame show, the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase starts now. Welcome in the Sester Miller High School at the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase presents the Goreville Lady Black Cats at the Sester Miller Waltonville Lady Devils. A very pleasant Wednesday evening, wherever you may be listening in on WMIX 94.1 FM, as well as MyWithersRadio.com. I'm Denny Zawinski. I'll be bringing you the play-by-play of this game. Joining me alongside in just a bit is the voice of Mount Vernon Athletics here on WMIX, Mr. Chris Hugo. This is the Coach House Garages pregame show. If you're in need of a garage to protect your car or prize possession, Coach House Garages has the building for you. Call Daryl Sheridan at 244-1061 for a free on-site estimate. Both teams warming up on the floor. Both teams are warming it up as far as state rankings and state recognition. And the aforementioned Chris Hugo joins me now. And Chris, two teams with a lot of hype. Very few losses, only two between, and this should be an outstanding game here tonight in the middle of January. Well, we'd like to think it will be. Both teams 15-1 and one on the year, 4-0 and oh in the conference for the Glorville Lady Black Cats, 5-0 and oh for the Sensible Waltonville Lady Devils. This has the making to be a good one. Glorville comes in state ranked in 1A. The Sensible Waltonville Lady Devils, I believe, have had a couple of votes in the latest 2A poll. So you think about what this one will carry here tonight and how much it will mean in the BDC West. And, and you just take a look at all the banking this one happens to be. We've seen Glorville already once this year. We'll see them again as we travel down there for the rematch coming up later this month. And you just think about all the potential this one has. Well, there's a lot of potential in this because Goreville comes in last year off the of super sexual appearance in Class 1A. And you go through and you won loss this year to their arch rival in Johnson County, Vienna. Central Blue Waltville stubbed their toe early near the Trico at the Sparta Invitational. So you have two teams, one state ranked, Warville is state ranked, was obviously their run last year. And then, of course, Central Blue Waltville and their coach Rick Metcalf won loss, hot off the Chester Tournament Championship. Both teams on a roll coming in, and of course, we get to do the first of what we will do two games. When the return trip happens, the Cesar Blair Waltonville goes to Goreville, so we get the luxury of doing both of these matchups this year in the regular season. What we do, and we expect to be good because they're supposed to be good on paper, going to be good on the air, going to be good on the floor, and when you take these two teams in, again, we've seen Goreville already once this year. We had them on the showcase against Woodlawn back inside Gymnasium. That one went the way of the Black Cats. Here tonight, a little bit more evenly matched matchup as the Lady Devils come in with just a long loss of the season, and as you mentioned, Lady Devils' long loss but the Vianna, a team that won the tough Marion tournament to start the year. So they start off with that 5-0 clip. Vianna has had a great run in 2A thus far in the BDC as well. They're in the East, however. And so really when you take all these factors, you combine them and you look at the two teams and the coaching makeup and, and the makeup of the players on the floor, we know, we get it, we see it. This one has the potential, or should have had the potential at one time to have been a postseason matchup back in the two-class system. And it is. And these two teams warming up on the floor in front of us. Goreville won the JV game 41-34. We need to step out for our first break here in the Coach House Garage pregame show. When we come back, we'll talk more about these two teams, this game, and, of course, things coming up here on WMIX. This is Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. A Coach House Garage is money well spent. On craftsmanship that's sure to get compliments. Don't cut corners on your garage. It adds value to your home. That's why you need to see the professionals at Coach House Garages. Choose from a variety of Coach House Garage designs, or they'll build one to your design. For a dealer near you, check the yellow pages in Mount Vernon, or go online to coachhousegarages.com. More than just a garage. More than just a garage. It's a Coach House 
Whether you're an Integra customer needing a new home or just tired of the constant changes associated with big corporate banking, you do have a choice. Hi, I'm Joe David Cummins with Community First Bank. We built our business around one goal, your needs. With five locations and a team of your friends and neighbors to support you, your banking solutions are handled right here at home. And to make your move easy, we have new account specials and personal bankers ready to help. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Streaming worldwide on MyWithersRadio.com. This is 94.1 FM WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion, Effingham. A free service from Withers Broadcasting. Well, welcome back to Cespular High School. About seven minutes ago for the start of this one on the Coach Off Garage's pre-game show. If you're looking for a garage builder who will build a quality garage at a fair price with a five-year written warranty and financing available, then a Coach House Garage is for you. Call Daryl Sheridan at 244-1061 for a free on-site estimate. Chris, both of these teams coming off tournament wins, the Goreville Lady Blackcats come out of the Benson Ranger S Christmas Tournament winning that. Cesar Valer plays their Christmas tournament, basically half mid-winner, half trap Christmas last week at Chester. Beating a couple, oh, yeah. Dupo, El Dorado, Trico. Now you can say what you want about the tournament, it's still a tournament championship. So both these teams come in on a roll. Maybe Goreville been a little bit more tested here recent weeks than has Cesar Valer. Well, and Danny, I mean, that may be the case. And not trying to slide the Chester tournament whatsoever, but you look at the margin of victory throughout the Chester tournament. You see how, how well and how distinguished and how much, how apart they set themselves from the competition over there, it kind of becomes the great equalizer, the margin of victory versus the strength of schedule. You look at Goreville, and sure, they were in the, the Ranger at Christmas Classic and, and won that, but, man, I don't think there's anything that can be said about either one of those tournaments that really set it apart from the other compared to these two teams on the floor. 15-1 and one and 15-1, and one, similar schedules, but probably the lone exception being that Christmas Classic. And that being the exception, of course, Goreville, Moving into the Black Diamond Conference this year, ironically enough, uh, located at down by I-24, which would be uh, east of I-57, you drew a straight line down. They come to the west side of the conference, and they pick up a rivalry with Cessler Wombo. Last night, the boys came in at 162.56, and we're right back into this one here with the girls playing on back-to-back nights here at Cessler Well, we are, and this is a team that you often don't hear a lot about, in our neck of the woods especially, and this is a team, as you mentioned, had a super sectional appearance. They did fall to Cal Herrick Feature City at Salem last year. And I don't think people understand just how good this Black Hat team was a year ago. You factor in all the returning experience that they have, and this is a team that in 1A could be poised to make that style of run again. And he, he, the bus fall that was Cal Herrick Feature City, it might be one that you might see again in that same super sectional. However, I think this year with that returning experience, the experience that was had from that particular game, and if there was a rematch this year, I think you might give a slight edge to the Goreville Lady Blackcats. That said, however, a very good 2A team in the form of the Central Lear Waltonville Lady Red Devils. Rick Metcalf, of course, as we all know, in his first year, just the lone loss, undefeated here in the conference. And we can't just, we cannot play off how big this game is here tonight to set the tone the rest of the way for the conference race. Speaking of setting the tone, we need to set the tone and take another break here on the Coach House Garage's pregame show when we come back. Talk a little bit more about this game on our upcoming schedule here on WMIX. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Clean up on once a year savings at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Get 70% off all Christmas and winter decor. Plus save 15 to 30% off your favorite furniture from Lazy Boy, Flex Steel, Roy Hill, Lane, Sealy Bedding, the Paula Dean Collection, and loads of new home decor and wall decor, new ceramics, clocks, mirrors, and more. Newell Furniture in the General Store. Cleaning up, restocking, and offering you savings galore. Just how big of a Saluki fan are you? People's National Bank is challenging your fanhood. Show your Saluki colors by opening an SIU Saluki free checking account exclusively at People's National Bank. It only takes $100 to open. Your first box of Saluki checks is free and online banking. Visa debit card and bill pay are free too. Stop by People's National Bank today to find out more. People's National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 
Sessor Auto Body would like to take a moment to remind everyone driving to and from the game to drive safe and be alert. Sometimes events happen beyond your control. When it does, take your vehicle to the collision pros. Sessor Auto Body is pre-approved by most insurance companies throughout Southern Illinois. This allows them to get the parts ordered quicker, getting you back on the road faster and in showroom condition. Sessor Auto Body, 602 South Park in Sessor, or call 625-3523. That's 625-3523. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. Daily schedules, scores, and more. Like WMIX Sports on Facebook. Back to the showcase on WMIX. Welcome back to Sessler High School. It's Doorville, Sessler, Walt Mill, and I in a big time girls basketball matchup here. This is the Coach House Garage's pregame show. If you're looking for a garage builder to build a quality garage at a fair price with a five year written warranty and financing available, then a Coach House Garage is for you. Call Daryl Sheridan at 244 1061 for a free on site estimate. We remind people to follow us on Facebook. I should say follow us on Twitter at 94 Sports. It's being updated tonight. And you can follow us there. Get all kinds of information not only tonight, but the rest of the season. There's games go on in all sports. Also, go to our Facebook page, WMIX Sports. You can see all kinds of schedule scores and information there as well. And, of course, updates from this game tonight as well. And while you're there, you really enjoy it. Like us on Facebook, WMIX Sports. And, Chris, we got to talk about this before we go to break. What a student body so far over to our right by the Central Miller High School students. Exactly. It's always great, as you're about to see on Facebook, to see students supporting their fellow classmates. And it's kind of funny. I was talking about it off the air, and you were getting ready to post it on Facebook. We knew we had to talk about it. But they have shown up in droves, full force here tonight, old uniforms, older uniforms, oldest uniforms here tonight. And they've gone all the way back probably about as far as 30 years since they got some older uniforms. Yeah. Also brought the fish wrap the opposing team to well, And I also want to mention that back when in 2010, two years ago, when the SB boys made the run to Peoria, they had the captain yep. the heel hats out yep. there back again tonight. Somebody said that was the first time they had seen those hats since that run. The horns have went off. We need to take a, take a break for the national anthem. We'll return for more of the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. How did the Saturday sports show ring in the new year? By bringing you even better sports conversation in 2012. More scores, more local discussion, and a better mix of guests than anyone else. Combine that with ample knowledge of the teams you love, and you'll reserve more than one preset for AM 940. The perfect New Year's resolution? Not missing the Saturday Sports Show. Only on WMIX and online at MyWithersRadio.com. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. Hey, this is Big Dave at All Stars and Stitches, located at 418 East Main Street, a half a block from the Benton High School. Our hours are Monday through Friday from 10 to 6 and Saturday 10 to 3. We provide custom screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, vehicle lettering, vehicle wraps. If you want it printed on, we probably do it. Hey, this is Coach Aaron. You're the big man. Big Dave a call at All Stars and Stitches, 435-555-555. By the way, what was that phone number again? 435-555-555. People's National Bank would like to remind everyone to listen to the Mount Vernon Rams this season right here on WMIX. People's National Bank has been serving Southern Illinois since 1909 and knows the importance of supporting local youth sporting events in the community. Tune into WMIX 94.1 and show your support for the Mount Vernon Rams. People's National Bank, your true community bank, serving Southern Illinois since 1909. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Car insurance with personal service at no extra charge? What a novel concept. That's why State Farm is a leader in providing insurance and financial services and remain strong in this economy. At State Farm, Scott Owens is dedicated to helping you get the coverage that's right for you and the discounts you deserve. No one takes care of you like State Farm. Scott Owens will prove it. Call Scott at 242-3770. That's 242-3770. Like a good neighbor, Scott Owens is there. More basketball action ahead. Presented by Community First Bank. Welcome back to Sester Miller High School. Doorville and Sester Miller Walkville here on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. This time for the People's National Bank starting line. Stop by People's National Bank and let them remind you 
what banking with a local family-owned bank is all about. Visit a branch near you or log on to peoplesnationalbank.com. People's National Bank, member FDIC. Mr. Hugo, the starting lineup for this big matchup here tonight. Well, first, of course, for the visiting Corbell Black Hat, 50-1 on the year, 4-0 and in this Black Diamond Conference, coached by Mike Helton. They are led by number 10, Shelby Miller, number 15, Jessica Wright, number 34, Madison Caven, and number 45, Tiffany Shadowitz. I believe I omitted number 12, Alice Webb, and that is your starting lineup tonight for the visiting Gorbell Black Cat. Now for the Central Valier Waltonville Lady Devils, coached by Rick Metcalf. They are 15 and 1 on the year, 5 and 0 in the conference. Trying to laugh about the music selection there for a second. They will feature three Stetcher Valier, two Waltonville tonight. Number one, Ray Lavin. Number three, Chelsea Miller. Number 22, Megan Eskew. Number 40, Tasha Noor. And number 42, Rachel Bottle, off practice Sunday night tonight for Rick Metcalf's Lady Devils. That old slide up to you uh, by People's National Bank. Have instant access to your account anytime, anywhere with online banking from People's National Bank. Log on to peoplesnationalbank.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. A tremendous crowd here on Tap Chris. Big crowd on the Sessions of the Lear side especially. I mean, this is almost uh, a boys crowd if you would see more for the Red Devils at home. Well, it is, but the great thing is it's for the girls here at home. And as we get ready to tip off, Danny, I, I don't think you can appreciate enough the fan support that will come with success. And, and you hope to see it all times, but they're here now, and that's all that matters, and they're going to support these girls. More board updates we brought to you by Scott Oaks and State Farm Insurance tonight, dedicating to help you get the right coverage for the discounts you deserve. Give Scott Owens a call at 242-3770 like a good neighbor. Scott Owens is there. The Lady Black Cats of Goreville, black jerseys trimmed in yellow and white. The Lady Devils will be in their white jerseys trimmed in maroon and black. Their crowd standing across the way as we get ready to go. Kevin Hall, Darren Koppel, and Eric Saunders on the game tonight. Three very good officials for this good basketball game we expect. Tips controlled by the Lady Black Cats. Shelby Miller will bring it up as the crowd sits down except for the Cesar Miller suit body over to our right. Across the way. Right side, the Lady Devils go man to man. Right has it for Goreville. Guarded by Lappin. She'll throw a top of the key. Stolen that. Tipped away. Ball to the floor. Ball on the floor. Door has it. Marlowe has it. And it's recovered by Goreville. Out at the timeline. And it's over and back. It'll be a turnover on that, Goreville. That is a good call by Kevin Hall because what happened? She regained control of the basketball. Even though it was six, she regained it first to the front court. She stepped over the line. That is an over and back to start. Goreville's going to pick up man to man. Chris and I saw Goreville back on Woodlawn at the center put on a clinic. They're salty and definitely all deserving of the state rank they have right now. Ray Lappin will have it as Goreville play man to man. Shields dribble and throw left side to door. Dangerous pass. Door throws it into Marlowe. That is at the left elbow and she is on the jump ball and that will stay with Sessler Waltonville. Community First Bank, if you're tired of big corporate banking, you have a choice in Jefferson County. Community First Bank's at home at Dick's, Ina, Woodlawn, and Mount Vernon. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. On the right wing with it is Miller. She'll dribble to the free throw line, trying to work the pick and roll, couldn't get it done. Miller down the left, right side, up and in. Lady Devils take the lead. Chelsea Miller with a basket. It's two zip. Coming quickly, other Shelby Miller. Dribbles down and dribbled it off her foot out of bounds. A little bit of nerve there early on by the Lady Black Cats on the road. That's a big game. Both teams have kind of showed some struggles here in the early going. Spencer Valier just able to kind of get to the basket there off the uh, Chelsea Miller runner. On the left side, Lappin throws it to FQ. Left wing back to Lappin. Now throw right side to Miller. She'll cut off the set, off the screen, off the right elbow. Back to Marlowe, top of the key. She dribbles to the free throw line. Back to FQ. Skip pass. Right side, Miller. Has struggled, steps out of bounds. See some nerves there early on, things that we've seen these two teams not do in previous games this year. Well, it looks as if for a moment that it wasn't going to happen on that turnover, but it had that foot down right as she went to go throw it back in, and so it'll be a turnover. That's where they're walking. The Lady Black has had the basketball. Shadow was a throw it left wing to Cavan. Cavan's back top of the key to right on the right wing to Shadow. Inside pass to Cavan. Turn jumper is good. Madison Cavan gets Gorville on the board. We're tied at two. We'll also pick a Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game when this one's over. Crossroads Community Hospital, it's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Lapping gift to a cutting. Lapping to the basket and score. One four set across the free throw line. A cutter to the rim. And Lapping gives the Lady Devils the lead 4-2. to two. Nice little give and go play from the wing to the low post. Webb drives the lane. She play. Shot no good. Rebound Marlowe on the weak side. Gets it to Lapping. Lapping up in the right corner. In the front court to SQ. Lob pass door off her hands. Out of bounds. It'll go back. To Orville. 
your right. community, your choice, your bank with five locations, and friends and neighbors on staff who understand your needs. Community First Bank keeps it simple. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Turnovers even at two apiece at this point. Both teams somewhat sloppy, but both teams pretty effective offensively. One of two for the floor. Webb holds on the right wing. Top of the key pass. Cabin. One dribble. Now throws it left side to Miller. Miller holds out behind the wing. Comes off the screen. Now sees it four. Right. She'll dribble to the left elbow. Has it tipped and stolen away by SQ. Another turnover as we play. A lot of nerves early on. A big game conference-wise. And it'll be rattled around the state as well. Ranked in almost ranked teams. as what you can do worse. We can do worse better as the team so far in this first quarter. 5.23 to go. 4-2 here in the first. The Lady Devils on top of Goreville. Miller throws it left wing. Cavins. Cavins back out top of the key. The right off her hands. Off her legs out of bounds. Woo! Good catch by Eric Saunders underneath. That went off of the knee as she fell. and Lost it out of bounds. Fourth turnover for the Goreville Blackcats. It is a nerve-wracked situation so far in the first three minutes. However, the Lady Devils have that 4-2 lead to start this game. Ray Lappin throws it in the right corner of the door, back to Lappin on the wing. In the corner, Marlowe. She's looking for door. She's fronted. Marlowe dribbles, dips on the floor. Ball goes out to the right wing to Lappin. She's got black Lady Blackcats everywhere, and Goreville has the basketball stolen away. That is Shadowin. Shadowin's up the court to right. Layup good. We're tied at four. It's not been pretty early, but we're tied at four with 4.40 to go in the first. Lady Devils have the basketball. Lappin throws right wing to SQ. To Lappin, top of the key. Three ball on the way. Front of the iron. Score on the rebound. Lady Devils shot off the glass. Misses. Rebounded by Goreville. Webb has the basketball. Gets to right. She'll dribble up the left side of the floor. In between the circles, she'll throw it on the post. Shot, turnaround jumper, no good by Shadowin. Tips out of bounds by the Lady Devils, and it'll go back to Goreville. 4.17 to go in the first quarter. It's 4-4, Goreville win bound of basketball. In the left corner with it is Shadowin. She'll hold above her head. Shadowin's inside, ball tip. Stolen ball on the floor. Goreville recovers it back. That's Webb. Webb bounce pass across the other way. Left is good. What a play. Webb from her teacher. Bounce pass across the lane to right is 6-4. Well, into that possession, Danny, this game was about as even as it possibly could be. Both teams two or four from the fourth floor, turnovers, two rebounds. With the basketball, laughing out by the timeline, throws it right side to SQ. She'll throw it back top of the key to Marlowe. Marlowe will hold above her head. Lady Devils trail 6-4 to Goreville here with 3.40 to go in the first. Marlowe throws it off the hands of Miller out of bounds. Another turnover, and it'll go to Goreville. Darnell Haley will check in for Goreville. She'll come in for number 34, Madison Cavan. Well, Coach, ball game here, Helton and Metcalf. Neither one has called a timeout here with all the panic that's ensued because they both realize it's relatively even. Why waste a timeout now with no clear momentum? Feller throws it left side to Haley. Haley now leaves it for right down the lane. She goes left-handed. No good. Rebound door for Seth and Miller Waltonville. She gets it up to Lappin. Lappin has to sprint up. She goes left baseline, has to pick it up. That's jump ball. No stolen away. And it's going to be a jump ball. Nice play there. By Tiffany Shadow with some quick hands to force that jump on another turnover on the Lady Devil. Well, she saw the blood in the water, got there quickly, realized that Lappin had to change her angle towards the basket, had to do kind of an arc out towards the sideline. That cost her some valuable time to beat the defense. They were able to get the double team, force the turnover. Miller has it, and she'll shovel past the Shadow and she'll come off the screen, left side with it, to right, down the lane, left hand, and she goes to miss the left, rebounded by Marlowe of the Lady Devil. Out to Miller, she sprints down the right side. Quick as she goes, nobody will catch her. Throws it in the door, tip jump ball again. 2.52 to go in the first quarter. 6 4, Goreville over Cessna Waltonville. Familiar faces, new places. Bank with Ray and Bridge, Community First Bank's new 46th Street location in Mount Vernon. And welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Ask you left corner pass tomorrow off her hands. And boy, it is a basket of nerves for both sides here tonight. Ball passes just going off hands out of bounds. Well, I think they understand just how big this game is. The, the winner has a lot less pressure with the conference race going down the stretch. Loser, not so much. Obviously, you had that rematch coming up on a Monday night on January 30th, but you really want to get this one. And both teams struggling to establish that clear cut momentum. Kayla Williams has checked in for SV. Three ball on the way from Miller off the mark top of the key. Webb skies through the rebound. Dribbles into traffic and scores. Allison Webb with her first two points. 8 4 Goreville. And that quiets the crowd across the way from Sessler or Waltville. Williams in the corner. Throws it back to Miller. Top of the key to Lappin. Now to Miller on the right side. She goes baseline. Sticks it back out to Lappin. Top of the key. 
dribbles down the lane. Jump ball again, and that'll go to Goreville. Goreville's defense in their hands getting in on basketballs and the ball picked up is amazing here in the first quarter. It's like they're, they have some sort of magnetic instinct because wherever the ball is, they are, and typically with a hand on it. That is the seventh turnover force against the Lady Red Devils by Goreville, and they've done it all defensively. Lady, their pressure. Lady Devils have seven turnovers and only four points. They will trap the timeline. That's a trademark of Rick Metcalf. Here comes a three on the way by Pritchett. No good. Rebound Webb. Shot blocked. Rebound weak side. Goreville again. They'll throw it around top of the key. Miller. Here's a three for Miller. It's going to miss everything and go to the back. Out of bounds. And it'll go back to the or Walton. That is the last thing you want to have happen with a student section there in front of you. I'll tell you, remember to do it on every time she touches the ball. It'd be worth that. But if not, we'll go on and they probably won't remember. 152 to go in the first. Goreville by four. Eight to four. Lappin on the left wing, gives it to Miller. Her shot from 10, no good. Rebounded by Miller. For Gorville, and that's a reach-in foul. That, to me, that is the first foul of the ball game. That one is on Natasha Dore, her first team first. 144 to go in the first quarter. Gorville leads Sessions with a walk delay four. They quickly go the other way. Right wing pass in the front court, Haley. She'll lob inside the web off her hands. Stolen by SU, gives it to Lappin. Lappin has it tipped away. SU recovers out by the timeline, gives it back to Miller. Miller will throw right corner to Williams. Williams thought baseline, got cut off, back to Lappin. Now to Miller, has to recover it out by the timeline. Miller to Williams on the right side, back to Miller. That's where Blair Waltonville looks a little nervous here early on. As Miller gets it from Lappin there, looking back door, couldn't get it done. Now they throw it to SU off her hands out of bounds. And man, oh man, it's a struggle so far for the Lady Devils. You can really tell the impact the Goreville defense has had, Danny, because they're trying to throw lead passes away from the body to avoid the turnover. What they're doing is, is they're not establishing that mental presence with each other to where it's just going out of bounds anywhere or going nowhere near the person it's intended for. Lots of turnovers here early on, especially for the Lady Devils. On the right wing with it is Cavins. Down the lane she goes, shot blocked, but a foul. Cavins was fouled on the shot at 10th. That'll go on number 40, Tasha Dore. That's her second, Chris. That's a huge foul on the Lady Lady Devils. Now she established herself as a post player, but the problem there is pick up her second foul in the first quarter. She might take a seat. I don't see anybody getting up. First free throw is no good. She'll get one more. One fifty-two seconds to go. It's 8-4. Goreville on top of Sester Valer Waltonville are in the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIS. Second free throw cabins is long. Rebounded by Williams of Sester Valer. She'll throw it into the front court to Miller on the right block. Her shot is good. Chelsea Miller has four of the wall, sets for the Waltonville six points. With 40 seconds to go, it's 8 6 Goreville. Right throws it into a cutting. Cabins underneath, layup miss. Rebounded by Lappin. Lappin will come the other way for the Lady Devils. She'll throw it left side. SU off her hands out of bounds. SU, trouble catching the basketball here this evening. Well, they're all having trouble down low. They're trying to work it into the paint, and it's just not working out for them because when you look inside the paint, more often than not down the floor, there's four black cats in it. Maybe try to work something around the perimeter, try to get establish a mid-range jumper because that appears to be all you have to look at right now. Rick Metcalf going down his bench as he gets Thor back in for Eskew. That's the break. He'll have another sub. There's a cutting right to the baseline shot block. Now recovered on the right wing by Cavins. Her shot is good. Madison Cavins has four points, and it's 10-6 Goreville right now with eight seconds to go. Ready Devils have a shot with five, with four. Miller for a three from the wing. Good! Kelsey Miller at seven in the quarter, and at the first quarter, Horn knocks down a three. End of one. Goreville 10, and Sessler Miller walks down nine. Back to Sessler from Moore on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. When you want the best, think the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. The Orthopedic Center has the unique distinction of being one of only two non-academic accredited orthopedic teaching and research facilities in the state of Illinois. Our goal in education is to inspire the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Patient care, education, and research are our core strengths. Located on Veterans Memorial Drive, Mount Vernon, and St. Mary's Good Samaritans in Troya Campus. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. Discover the difference. Whether you're an Integra customer needing a new home or just tired of the constant changes associated with big corporate banking, you do have a choice. Hi, I'm Joe David Cummins with Community First Bank. We built our business around one goal, your needs. With five locations and a team of your friends and neighbors to support you, 
your banking solutions are handled right here at home. And to make your move easy, we have new account specials and personal bankers ready to help. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. More basketball action ahead. Presented by Community First Bank. Welcome back to Sessler High School. One quarter in the book here. It's Goreville's Lady Blackcats leading the Sessler Walton Lady Devils by a score of 10 to 9. And it's Winston and Chris Hugo alongside quickly. We start the second quarter with this 10-9 Lady Black Cat lead, but the Lady Devils have the basketball. Laughing between the circles. She'll throw right side. That is Jones. Bailey Jones has checked in. Williams from the corner is good. Michaela Williams had a big game in a game earlier this year against Hamilton County, Chris, and she scores on her first shot tonight. She's been big every time we've been around. Down the lane. Cavins to the rim. No good. Ball hits the floor. Rebounded out on the right corner by Haley. She'll throw inside. Stolen away by Miller. She's on a one on zero break, goes the other way, left, no good, but a foul. Chelsea Miller will go line and shoot two. That foul is going to be on Goreville, number 22, Brittany Pritchett, her first team first. Remember, Will Becker, Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game when this one is done. Crossroads Community Hospital is in the hospital. It's what health care should be. Miller's first free throw, no good, she'll get one more. We have a line change here for Goreville. Big line change. And uh, Coach Mike Elton will do that from time to time as he likes to shake things up a little bit, play lots of players. His goal by the end of the game, playing so many, is to wear teams down. Miller's second free throw is good. We're tied at 11. Chelsea Miller has eight. Actually, 12 10. They gave it the other way. 12 10. Sets a little Waltonville on top. On the right wing with it is Miller. Holds above her head. Lady Devils go 1-3-1. That shook Goreville up. They weren't ready for a 1-3-1. Stolen away by Jones. Goes to the board. Jump ball. And it'll stay with Goreville. With five locations in Mount Vernon, Dick, Nine and Woodlawn. Community First Bank is proud to be the official voice of the showcase. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC. Out of bounds underneath the Goreville basket. Right will trigger. Throws it out right wing to Sullivan. Sullivan in the lane. Shot. No good. And a foul. That foul's on number 35, Michaela Williams, her first. Team third. We have one score to report tonight only. It's a Wednesday night. Not a lot of action in the area, but the JB game tonight. Goreville beat Sessler Waltonville 41-34 as Sullivan makes the first. She'll get one more. That scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and Safe Farm Insurance. You might be paying too much for auto insurance. Give Scott Owens a call for a free discount. Double check. Like a good neighbor, Scott Owens is there. Speaking of being there, Sullivan's there off the bench with two more, two points, two free throws. We're tied at 12 with seven minutes to go in the first half. Miller will launch a two-pointer from the left wing. It's no good. Rebounded by Webb of Goreville. She'll get it out to Sullivan. She'll come up the left side into the front court. Now thrown away by Miller. Miller comes the other way quickly. One-on-one score. Kelsey Miller with 10 in the first half. It's a two-point lead, 14-12. Webb got behind the Lady Devils defense and missed the layup. Miller and... Marlow on the rebound. Miller got it to Marlow, and then as they outletted the lap, and she was cut off by a Gorville defender and traveled the basketball. Did first half turnover, Danny, for the Central there walked the Lady Devils, and you take a look at the differences in this game thus far. It's been the, the floor shooting from Gorville that has haunted them thus far. They were just 5 of 17 for the first quarter. Oh, yeah, it is on the way here as Gorville shooting has helped a lot. They have the basketball to turnover. Shadowing's occurred with the basketball. Shadowing's down the lane, shot, and she fouled. She'll go to the line and shoot two. Lady Devils cannot contain the speed and athleticism right now of the Lady Blackheads. Uh, it's definitely causing fits at this point. Uh, lucky to be up two, though. 14 to 12 with 6.29 to play here in the first half. And at the line is Tiffany Shadowing. She has not scored until now. Makes the free throw. We noticed that at Woodlawn. The Lady Blackheads black shoots the free throws as well. She'll get one more. And that one is good. Goreville great at the free throw line. Four out of six so far. And it is 14 all. We are tied here with 6.25 to go in the first half. Lappin throws it right side to Williams. Williams holding it. This man to man. Williams dribbles to the center circle to the left side. Lappin kicked out of bounds by Goreville. And it will be Sester Valer basketball. What a game this one is. We expected this to start with. And it has lived up to Billy here so far in this one. Special for Lurwin bound in front of the Goreville bench. With it down the left side is Williams. Williams with it. 
Pass the dribble back out to the top, to the left corner. I should throw it top to the key to Lappin. As the defense picks up, they throw it inside Marlowe. Pass over to Bailey Jones. She went up for a shot and she was fouled. Great ball moving on the interior by the Lady Devils. And that turned into a two free throw attempt here for Bailey Jones. Jones will go to the line. She played a lot of JV tonight. In the first one, in which Spencer Blur lost 41 34. First one is up and in by Jones. She'll get another. It's 15 14. Lady Devils on top in front of a big crowd here tonight, especially the student body across the way. Uh-huh. We have, it's a good game. We have passed the top of the hour, so we need to pause for station identification on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. Streaming worldwide on MyWithersRadio.com. This is 94.1 FM WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion, Effingham. A free service from Withers Broadcasting. Both free throws were made by Bailey Jones. The Lady Devils with four points off the bench. Lead by two, 16-14. With 5.55 to go in the first half. Down the lane, layup couldn't the foul. Shelby Miller scores. We're tied at 16. That's another foul on Bailey Jones. Her second team fifth for SB. She accomplished two things there, Danny. Gets herself the line for the N1 and shuts up the student section for a little bit. That's them up pretty well. We'll have a scoreboard update coming up here in just a second. Free throws missed. Ball tipped around, goes to the floor. Webb has it tipped out back to Miller. Miller went up for a shot, and we got to travel. Scoreboard update, the college basketball variety. Kentucky leads Auburn at the half on the road, 32-28. Syracuse over Villanova on the road, 71-54. And at the half, Iowa State leads Missouri, 38-36. That scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. Dedicated help you get the right coverage you deserve. Give Scott a call, 242 242- 37-70. On the right in the right corner is Miller, top of the key. Jones, left side pass to Lappin. Lappin will reverse the ball, and they go all the way back around to Chelsea Miller in the right corner. Get pass across to Jones, left side, back top of the key to Lappin, right wing to Miller. A lob over the top, try to get it to Williams. Webb comes in, tips it, Marlow recovers. Back to Jones, shot from 15, is no good. Rins in and out, Webb has it for Goreville. Double teamed in the back court. Has to pick up the dribble and gets it to Miller. We're tied at 16 with five to go in the first half. Miller to the right elbow, dribble pass. That goes to Shadowin. She picks it up and throws it to nobody. Williams hustles back court, ball on the floor. Bodies everywhere. Miller has it. Timeout, Mick, Coach Metcalf and Sester Blair Waltonville. And as soon as Chelsea Miller dove on the ball, Metcalf had that timeout. That's just great coaching. <laughs> I mean, he saw the presence of what was happening before him, was able to get the timeout called just in the nick of time because right after he did that, Possession was lost. And again, you have to remember, it wasn't like the ball was bouncing around. Chelsea Miller had it. And he called immediately as soon as she had it and saved it. But got a possession because Gorville had it. And he stole the possession there with that timeout. He did. Now they get a reset. See if they can make something happen. To try to exploit any flaws that George Metcalf might have picked up uh, during that particular possession or one of the various trips down the floor. Tied at 16. It's hard to believe. Actually, it really is. This one is so close. Williams in the corner, goes baseline, pull-up jumper from 10, off the iron, weak side rebound, Jones, the lap and 10-footer, good, as it rattles and rolls down the rim, circles the cylinder, it's not how, it's how many, and that would be a two-point lead for the Lady Devils, quickly the other way, right to the rim, left-hand layup, strong, gets their own rebound, puts it up, and no good, but a foul, right, will go to line and shoot two, and I'm telling you what, make or miss, Warville will beat people down the floor. Well, they turn into a football game. You're going to leave this one bruised in probably three different colors up and down the body just because of how physical they are. Bailey Jones has just picked up her third foul for the Lady Devils. First free throw by Wright is good. She's got five in the game and is now an 18-17 Lady Devils lead. When five Jefferson County branches and responsive quality service for all your accounts, Community First Bank would like to be the first to say welcome back to personal banking member FDIC. Right has the right step. Makes both the 18 all. Pittsburgh will come in for the Lady Devils. Cheyenne Pittsburgh. She'll come in for Bailey Jones. Jones off the bench. Two points to three fouls. Clapping across the timeline. Gets to Marlowe. They're going to run at the offense out by the volleyball line. They leave Lappin. Shot from three. No good. Off the mark. Rebound to three throw line by Wright for Goreville. And she's fouled by Williams. And that's her second. We'll shoot free throws at the other end. Jones with three. Williams with three. Off the bench for Seth Blair as far as foul. And Thor, starter has two. So Lady Devils with the key reserves and foul trouble as well as one starter. 
And now Gorville, who's made some hay at the free throw line this quarter, six out of seven. First shot, free throw is good. Rolls over the iron. That would be Jessica Wright. She'll get one more. 19-18. Gorville by one in this deep saw affair with 4.20 to go. Second free throw also good. 20-18. to Lady Blackcats by two. Lapping across the timeline between the circles. Dribbles to the right side. Has to come back to the left. Now throws it to Miller between the circles. Back to Lappin. They crisscross around each other. Lappin to Miller on the right wing. Dribbles now picks it up. Top of the key to Marlowe. Marlowe out to Lappin. Three ball on the way for the lead. Good. Ray Lappin hits a three-pointer. Lady Devils back in the lead by one. 21 to 20. Miller across the timeline. Throws it left side to Shadow. One's in the corner to Cavan. Cavins will throw a top of the key to Webb. It's tipped in the backcourt by the Lady Devils. Recovered by Wright. Gorville reset. Pittsburgh's got Wright. Wright gets around Pittsburgh to the elbow. Now it's foul on Miller. A little too rough on the hand check. And more free throws for Gorville. That is how they've stayed in this one, Danny. Only one field goal to speak up for Gorville here in the second quarter. And the thing is, too, Chris, Lady Devils being aggressive, I don't think they want to get into a bench-for-bench bench game here because I think the Lady Blackcats are tad deeper than Preston Blair Waltonville right now at this stage of the year. Just a smidge, plus they can make their free throws we've seen here in the second quarter. Still plenty of time left in the half. The Lady Devils have eight fouls in the half, and that first free throw's missed. Talk enough about good free throw shooting, teams will miss. Lassen throws it up in the left corner to Eskew. Her shot from 16 is no good. Rattles in and out, rebounded by Wright. She'll come up the left side, now picks up a dribble. Has to get rid of it and gets it to Miller. Miller will come across the timeline around Pittsburgh for Goreville. Down the lane, kick it out left wing. Three ball on the way from Wright is no good. Rebounded by Eskew of the Lady Devils. Eskew tipped out of bounds by Webb, and Lady Devils will inbound length to the floor to go. We're playing a pretty big tournament tonight in Sangamon County. Uh-huh. At the half, Pleasant Plains leads Rochester 18-9 to in boys' action. Not girls, boys' action. Boys' action in Wednesday night game. Odyssey, that scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance. If you're paying too much, give Scott Owens a call for a free discount double check. State Farm agent Scott Owens is there. Hey, he's a good neighbor. Lady Devils have it. Pittsburgh, and as a, at the travel now. Well, that's interesting. Is that a delayed call? Offside? Uh, yeah, that was a delayed call. That was like a seven-second delay you have in radio sometimes where callers come in and you can del- and view people. That was a seven-second delay on that walk call. Well, that's, that's about about right. I bet they'd like to have the dump button on that one. Well, I would pretend like it never happened. Right then, it never happened, but at least they got the call right. Eventually. Miller with it between the circles. Throws it right side to Haley. Haley will be double-teamed in the timeline. Still double-teamed and timeout. Norville's Mike Helton. Saved the turnover there as his player was double teamed out by the timeline. 2.34 to go in the first half. It's Sester Blair Waltonville leading Goreville 21 20. And once the turnover bug got out of the system and the nervous energy, Chris, this has really settled in to be an outstanding game. Well, it is. It's exactly what we thought it would be. A lot of contact, a lot of bruises, a lot of hustle. And great girls basketball here in Southern Illinois can be found right here tonight, Sester. And it is a great ball game right now, the Lady Devils. On top, at least at this point, 21-20 here with 2.34 to go in the first half. And have to be impressed that both teams, both with good coaches, pushing those buttons to see what works, what doesn't here in this one. And right now, the Lady Devils have that small one-point lead. As we are updating both on Twitter and Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter at 94 Sports and also go to Facebook, WMIX Sports. Like it's there. Ball inbound and stolen away by Lappin. She gets it up to Miller. Chelsea Miller got away with the travel and scored. Five points in the quarter for Chelsea Miller. 23-20. She had trouble getting those landing gears down after the jump to get the basketball and then took too many steps with the basketball. Goreville. Ryan on the left wing down the lane. She goes running left hander. Good. Boy, gets her right. Nice is move. A player. She is a player. Lady Devils have the basketball. Two minutes exactly to go as the time goes rolling. Miller, across the timeline, throws the right side to Pitchford. She'll throw inside door, or Marlo, who's left open, off her hands out of bounds. How many times has that happened tonight already, both teams? Too many, for the, especially for the Devils, Danny. Uh, you think about every possession in the first quarter that it seemed like it was ending up with a loose ball across the baseline turnover. 23-22, Lady Devils by one, but the Black Cats have the basketball. 140 to go in the first half. We'll go, they'll go for the final shot as the Lady Devils have went to a 1-3-1. 
Top of the key is Haley. Stolen away by Miller. Chelsea Miller going the other way for the Lady Devils. Left good, but no foul. Miller should have probably made that one. Minimal contact there. However, should have been a line and shoot two. Haley picks up her first third on Gordville. Lady Devils have 18 fouls, while Gordville has just three here in this first half. First free throw is up and short by Chelsea Miller. Should get one more. Shadows will check in for Goreville. Haley will set out for the Lady Black Cats. Lady Black Cats going for a sweep tonight and for Goreville and Sester for their games this week. The boys won here last night, 62 56. Miller gets one out of two. Big quarter for her, sixth in the quarter, 13 in the game. It's a two point lead, 24 22. Lady Devils, there's a steal by Pittsburgh off the pass in the half court. Here comes Lappin. She's double teamed, throws it up to Pittsburgh. Ball stolen away now and a foul. A little bit of miscommunication there, Danny, on who the ball was supposed to actually be thrown to. And so instead of calling somebody else off, results in a turnover and then a tic tac foul. A factor that may come up in this one, a lot of free throws here for Gordon are in this one, is it's the 19th foul on the Lady Devils. As Maddie Garner will check in now. Chelsea Miller has two. Bailey Jones off the bench has three. Michaela Williams off the bench has two. And Tasha Doris starter has two. Some little bit of foul trouble here for the Lady Devils as we wind down this first half. Sucks to be a pain in the rear end as you go through your bench. Shot free throw is no good uh, by Cabin. Rebounded by Marlowe of the Lady Devils. Laughing quickly, throws it into SQ in the lane. She makes the catch in traffic. So Marlowe, 16 footer up and in. Rachel Marlow gets on the board at 26-22 with 60 seconds to go in the first half. Worked by Marlow to break the field there. Maybe they'll stop leaving more points. Miller, the shadow ones on the left side. Will Gorbo go for a final shot? It's a 1-3-1 by the Lady Devils. They throw left side to Webb. Webb down the lane. Shot block from behind by Garner. Rebounded by Gorville. Shadow ones on the left wing. Top to Keita Miller. Thought about the three. Couldn't get a shot. She goes down the lane. Tries to go to Cavins underneath out of bounds, and it goes to Lady Devil. And that's rough for Cavins, Danny. If she lets that one go, it goes right back to a black uniform. She couldn't see it because of the screen that was set in between her and the basketball. It's a touch that's trying to save it from going out. It ends up back in the hands of a white jersey. Laughing across the timeline to the left side. Back out to SQ. She has to recover. It's almost stolen by right. Right corner, Marlowe off her off of Webb out of bounds. Marlowe will get another possession as for her Lady Devils. You're the Devils. You want to fight for the last shot here, Danny. you got possession to start the second half right now. 26 seconds left to go in the first half. Lady Devils by four. They have the basketball. Garner on the left wing. Throws his top of the key to Laffin. Laffin out by the timeline. Leaves it for Marlowe. Marlowe will dribble. And now goes down the right side. Bump foul. No call. Marlowe picks up on the right wing with 10. Laffin with eight. Three ball on the way. No good. That was wanting to go in. Rebound the other way. It's Marlowe. It's going to get a foul. That'll be her first team tenth. Whistle blue before the contact, but sometimes and that'll happen. Anticipation there, but it's a foul. So six seconds left to go in the first half. Gorville will go the other way. Allison Webb will shoot two at the free throw line with her Gorville Lady Cats. Black Cats trailing 26 to 22. What has been everything we expected as Webb misses the first free throw. Oh, boy. Well, we start bragging uh, about their free throw shooting, and now we see what happens. Started bragging, and it went down the hill, as they say, so to speak. So to speak. Second free throw, no good as well. Rebounded, though, by Wright. She puts it up in a foul. Jessica Wright got the rebound, snuck around the white-shirted Lady Devils, and picked up a foul, number 23, Cheyenne Pitch, for her first. In this day and age, that should really not happen on a free throw unless you get a crazy kick. That's two more free throws for Jessica Wright. She's done well here in this first half. This is that one, though. Well, that's all you got to do. Ready for last, miss her last two. Thor, with her two fouls, come in for Pittsburgh and her two fouls. Bleacher rattled. That's been your phone, not mine. Well, second free throw up. No good. Rebounded by Dor. And get it to Lappin with one, with three, with two, with one. No good at the horn. We played 16 minutes there at Sester Valier. It is the Lady Devils of Sester Valier, Waltonville 26. Boreville 22 will step out for a break. Come back with the Red Lake College Halftime Show. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Hi, Roy Schmidt at King City Chrysler. When you think of the all-new Chrysler 200, the line imported from Detroit immediately comes to your mind. When it comes to character, comfort, and fuel efficiency, its capabilities extend well beyond its mid-sized shadow. 
This is not a style as a concept. This is design as a practice. This is the new Chrysler 200. This is a car that projects beauty beyond a footprint. Because when you build the new Chrysler 200, you have promises to keep. The all-new Chrysler 200 sedan is really an amazing automobile. Come into King City Chrysler today and receive huge cash discounts on 10 remaining 200s in stock. Or receive 0% for 72 months. We may be able to lower your existing payment and you drive a new car. At King City Chrysler, 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois, where you can count on us. How did the Saturday Sports Show ring in the new year? By bringing you even better sports conversation in 2012. More scores, more local discussion, and a better mix of guests than anyone else. Combine that with ample knowledge of the teams you love, and you'll reserve more than one preset for AM 940. The perfect New Year's resolution? Not missing the Saturday Sports Show. Only on WMIX and online at MyWithersRadio.com. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. Are you tired of being charged unnecessary fees by other banks in our area? Hi, this is Melody True at People's National Bank. With our customer-friendly products such as free checking, Saluki checking, Visa check cards, online banking, bill pay, and much more, People's National Bank is proud to offer our customers the products they deserve. Stop by one of our People's National Bank locations or visit us online at peoplesnationalbank.com and see what banking with a family-owned community bank is all about. People's National Bank, member of DIC, non-usage fees may apply. Does this sound familiar? I can't stand this job. I just wish I had time to go back to school, but with work and family. I know. I just enrolled in Rend Lake College's evening cosmetology program. They have evening classes that will even fit into your busy schedule. You can even graduate in less than two years. Classes are convenient to get to. They're in Studio RLC in Mount Vernon. They even offer financial aid. What's it like? I've been out of school so long. It's not your typical take notes. Listen to a lecture program. We will learn the latest styles and trends in cosmetology and at looks like we'll have fun doing it. We'll be out on the salon floor getting hands-on experience and getting to know all kinds of people. By the time we're done, we'll be ready to jump into a new career and love our jobs for once. Okay, how do I sign up? I called 618-242-8459, but you can also check out their website at rlc.edu slash studio rlc or stop by the RLC Marketplace in Mount Vernon. This is the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. The Red Lake College Halftime Show starts now. Welcome back to Festivaler High School. We're at the half. It is Festivaler Waltonville 26, Goreville 22 here on the Red Lake College Halftime Show. Red Lake College has been the vehicle for a brighter future for over 40 years. Students can choose from more than 100 degree and certificate programs. Save thousands of dollars at Red Lake College to get to work. Red Lake College. It's time. 26-22. Festival of Waltonville over Goreville here on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. We'll need to take a break. And when we come back, scoring and stats from this game here in front of us. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Clean up on once a year savings at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Get 70% off all Christmas and winter decor. Plus save 15 to 30% off your favorite furniture from Lazy Boy, Flex Steel, Roy Hill, Lane, Sealy Bedding, the Paula Dean Collection, and loads of new home decor and wall decor, new ceramics, clocks, mirrors, and more. Newell Furniture in the General Store. Cleaning up, restocking, and offering you savings galore. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. We're worldwide. This is the showcase on WMIX and MyWithersRadio.com, presented by Community First Bank. Welcome back to Sessifler High School halftime as the Sessifler Waltonville Lady Devils lead to Goreville Lady Black Cats 26 22 here on the Red Lake College halftime show. Red Lake College is over 100 degree certificate programs to choose from. It's been your vehicle to a brighter future for over 40 years. Red Lake College. It's time. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu. I'm Denny Swinson. Chris, you go alongside. Chris, 
before we get to the stats, your thoughts on what, from my view, has been a very exciting first half of basketball. Exciting, close, physical, sloppy. I mean, it has all the makings of a great basketball game, which is exactly what we've seen here. Physical on both sides. Both sides have shown signs of nerves, though, at various times when the action starts to get a little bit physical and a little bit closer. So good to see both teams maintain that edge and uh, a lot of uh, shot, a lot more <laughs> field goal spell, of course, for Central and Waltonville, which has been the difference in this game. And that's been the difference, and I'll let you go ahead and give the stats of the scoring of this first half. Well, as you take a look at the team stats first. For the Goreville Lady Black Cats, they were 7-24 from the inside to 29%. Did not make a three-pointer on four attempts for 0%. Makes them 7-28 from the floor for 25%. Taking a look at the Lady Devils now from the inside, they were 8-19 of for 42%. They were 2-5 of from the outside for 40%. They were 10-24 of from the floor, excuse me, for 42%. Taking a look at your free throws, 8-17 of for the Black Cats. Their free throw is have been what has kept them in this game. Again, 8 of 17 for 47%. 4 of 6 for the Lady Devils for 67%. Rebounding Ed does favor Goreville, 18, 12. Seven of those were the defensive variety. 11 offensive rebounds, a lot of second chance opportunities and points for Goreville. For the Lady Devils, again, 10 of those 12 rebounds were defensive, two of them of the offensive variety. Turnover disadvantage, there is none. 12-12, the turnover battle is tied between these two teams. Now taking a look at your scores. First for the Goreville Black Cats, they're led by Jessica Wright with 10. Four points for Madison Cabot, two apiece now from Tiffany Shadowin, Allison Sullivan, Allison Webb, and Shelby Miller. Now for your Lady Devils, they were led by Chelsea Miller's game-high 13. Seven from Ray Lappin, two apiece from Bailey Jones, Michaela Williams, and Rachel Marlowe to give us our halftime score of the Lady Devils 26, the Lady Black Cats 22. I think in front of us, Chris, what you see, a game that I think both teams sorely needed, especially Lady Devils, a close game against a quality opponent, to see where they stand at here. We're just about four or five weeks away from the start of the regional for both these teams. Yeah, and we're just a couple weeks away from finding out who plays who when. We already know where each team is going, but it, 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 we're at that time of the season. Off the air, I, I know the perfect term to describe it. On the air, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good one. It's kind of at that fever pitch, I guess you could say, of the season where everything's going to start to wind down before we know it. Boys Midwinter Tournaments will be here next week. There's some girls midwinters already going on this week and in the next as well. And so, you know, you really think about it, Danny. We're getting to the two-thirds point. We'll be at that last third, the home stretch, and we'll start to find out all the pairings and whatnot and see who goes where and the seeds. And it's, you're going to look back on these games and realize the lessons you learned here are going to be that much more important going into February. And we talk about things like that as we get to this time of year. As you said, a week from the day, we're halfway through midwinter week. And, well, once you get past midwinter week next week, things start going very quickly down that roller coaster. Less than a month for the girls get to Bloomington. Less than a month or about a month for the boys get to Peoria. And it's game on from there. 26-22, this has been the Red Lake College Halftime Show, where Red Lake College will save you thousands of dollars on your education. Visit your virtual counsel at rlc.edu to see which of more than 100 degree certificate programs is right for you. Red Lake College, it's time. We'll take our final break of the half and come back for second half action here on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Whether you're an Integra customer needing a new home or just tired of the constant changes associated with big corporate banking, you do have a choice. Hi, I'm Joe David Cummins with Community First Bank. We built our business around one goal, your needs. With five locations and a team of your friends and neighbors to support you, your banking solutions are handled right here at home. And to make your move easy, we have new account specials and personal bankers ready to help. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, we're still catching every game, just a lot more from uh, home than here in the stands, huh? Yeah, and when we do get to go, Dad says we got to bring our own peanuts and stuff. Looking for some extra ticket money this season? Let a State Farm agent do a free discount double check that could save you hundreds of dollars on car insurance. We'll always be there for this team, even when we can't actually be here. Visit Jefferson County State Farm agent Scott Owens at 1810 Broadway in Mount Vernon for a free discount double check. Discounts may vary state to state. Daily schedules, scores, and more. Like WMIX Sports on Facebook. Back to the showcase on WMIX. Welcome back to Cesar Fuller High School. Jim's rock with music in the background. It's Cesar Fuller, Waltonville 26. Fourville 22. Danny Zawinski and Chris Hugo alongside. We look forward to another 16 minutes of good basketball. 
as the Lady Devils went down the basketball. We welcome our friends listening in in Johnson County from Goreville. We say hello to those listening in either on 94.1 FM or MyWithersRadio.com. Lady Devils have the first possession. Door on a shot. Awkward. It's so good. And a jump, jump ball. And it'll go back to Goreville. If you're tired of big corporate banking, you have a choice in Jefferson County. Community First Bank is at home in Dick's, Ina, Woodlawn, and Mount Vernon. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Lady Black Cats have the basketball in their first possession. Lady Devils open a half and a 1-3-1. Characteristic of Rick Metcalf's boys team in his time here at Cesar Valerian, of course, at Vienna. They throw it to the free throw line. Cavins is tied up by Miller, so a jump ball for you, a jump ball for you, and we go the other way. It'll equalize the turnovers, at least. Equal C, even Steven. Miller. SQ, Lappin, Marlowe, and Door for the Lady Evel. Lappin across the timeline. Throws the left side of Door on the wing. She'll hold above her head. Now top of the key to Marlowe. Right side to Lappin. Lappin dribbles to the left. Now throws it to Miller in the corner. 15 put her up. No good. Rims off the iron. Rebounded by right for Goreville. She's harassed and the ball sips and stolen on the floor. Jump ball and it'll go to Goreville. Woo! Don't let him play here in the first couple minutes, Chris. They are. Very much wow. looking paid by numbers when they're done after tonight's game. Ooh, instead of the colors by numbers, you get paid by numbers. Lady Devils will back off and they'll go the other way. Remember, those of you listening in, you can follow us on Twitter at 94 Sports and we'll go to our Facebook page, WMIX Sports. You remember like the paid by numbers, well. don't you? I remember that. You got some water and a little paintbrush the way you went? Yeah, you betcha. I was never very really good at art still enough to this day. They get inside the web, turn on jumper right block, no good, but a foul. And a mismatch there, Chris. They had Webb. Goreville did on the block against the guard Miller. I should say Lappin. And that is not going to bode well for the Lady Devils as Lappin picks up her first. And it is a chess match going on with Coach Metcalf and Coach Helton here. A lot of coverage. A lot of dignitaries here. Hall of Famer Terry Qualls, who coached for years on the boys' side of Goreville here in the Finland. As Allison Webb hits the first free throw, it's 26-23 Lady Devils. I have to imagine that. Mr. Tripp will be there someday as well. Uh, Mr. Tripp, well, one of the trips is down here to the left. The athletic director, Todd Tripp, as the second free throw is missed. Rebounded by Door, gets it to Lappin. She'll bring it across the timeline on the left side to SQ left wing, back to Lappin. Shot from three on the way is no good. Rebounded to the floor. Body fly. Miller has it for the Lady Devils to Lappin. She'll try to clear out against the man-to-man. Lappin throws it right side to SQ. SQ back to Lappin. Six and a half to go in the third quarter. Lady Devils lead Goreville 26-23. Around the screen, SQ to door. Now left wing to Lappin. Long off the iron. Hits the floor. Good block out Goreville. Body scramble for a ball on the floor. Jump ball. Oh, a travel call. And it's going to be on. That's from where Waltonville and the turnover will go to them. And the ball to Goreville. I didn't realize that they had... Possession off of the rebound, but apparently so. So look at credit for the offensive board and the turnover. I was blocked out by some bodies and an official I running in to it. separate, so I couldn't see it. So we'll go with the official. Tip ball by Miller and a half court stolen away by SQ for Lady Devil. SQ down the left side and she's fouled. That'll be on number 10, Shelby Miller. That'll be her first. Team first. Remember, we'll get the Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game when this one is done. Crossroads Community Hospital is more in the hospital. It's what healthcare should be. A box hit to the Lady Devils as SQ will trigger to door in the left corner. Back to Lappin on the left wing. Lappin has a tipped away stolen by Shadow. And what a play. Miller back on defense. Shadow to left. Blocked by Miller. Rebounded by Lappin. Lappin loses it though out of bounds and it'll go to Goreville. And that ball will go to Lady Blackcats on the turnover. Somebody needs to get some stick of I'll tell you what, I don't know if it's a new basketball or club. Or if it's been warm outside or what, but boy, the basketball is just hard to handle here this evening. But boy, Biden is what it is. I didn't, you didn't hear that here, though. Huh. Inbound the web. I, I can't take go with that. Oh, Spalding still works. And he gets a cheeseburger winning milkshake when he won. Webb off the pass, off the backboard, misses the layup. Door on the rebound, recovered by Miller. Uh, Caddyshack now stolen away by Wright. Wright the other way with Miller trailing and scores. Turnover, Lady Devils. Basket to right. It's a one-point game, 26-25. Lady Devils by one with five and a half to go in the third. Miller right side to Eskew. Back to Miller. On the left wing to Williams. Williams has it stolen away by right. There's the athleticism. The speed of Shadow ones has it. Now gives it to right. Left-hand layup off the glass. No good. Rebound door and Webb fight for it. Webb has it. 
Left spin, turn, baseline shot blocked by Wins, rebounded by Bartle. She's double teaming a foul. That is a foul on number 45. Tiffany Shadow into their first team second. The drawing still make basketball. Drawing just to make a mean basketball. basketball. Got a mean baseball club and a basketball. Like Warville's going to pick up full court. Here comes Miller up the right side. Miller around two Black Cats defenders. And she picks up, skip past left side. It's you left corner Williams, 15 footer up. Hits the front of the iron, rolls over to the weak side, ball to the floor. Miller on the rebound, battling, and it's a jump ball. And it will go to the Lady Devils. Your community, your choice, your bank, with five locations and friends and neighbors on staff to understand your needs. Community First Bank keeps it simple. Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Williams will trigger the inbound on the baseline underneath. She'll look, spin pass. Oh, what a move. There it is. Miller gets it from Lappin on the spin. Right block, left block. Lappin gets the pass and scores. It's 28-25, Lady Devil. Right at that time, spun from the right elbow down, cut across the lane through traffic, and was able to get the backdoor pass. Webb underneath, shot and a foul. Yep. Webb's going to go to the line and shoot two. She was fouled, much to the chagrin of Rick Metcalf. That's a foul on Ray Lapp in her second. That'll send Webb to the line to shoot two. With 4.33 to go in the third quarter, Lady Devils lead 28-25. What has been an outstanding game here so far. Free throw up and in. He will get one more. This has been a tremendous game here, and the hype has matched the game, which is a rarity sometimes at this level and any level. We've seen a lot of girls' basketball the past couple of weeks. We get out and cover both sides of the basketball, both boys and girls. There's so many games on at the 1A, 2A, and 3A levels. Second free throw miss. Marlow has it. Marlow will throw to Miller at top of the key. Marlow. We'll leave it off, and it had to lap, and now my Miller gets it back. Oh, backdoor cut by Lappin is good. Miller to Lappin on the backdoor cut, and it's 30-26, Lady Devils. Great job by the Lady Devils to do the basketball. Now they have the basketball. With the basketball on the right side is Miller. Inside the web, she goes down lane, ball tip stolen by Lappin. She gets to Miller, stolen back by Shadowin. Gets to Miller. Miller spins to the right lane, now throws it inside to... Martin is up and in. Macy Martin gets on, or I should say Marby Martin, gets back to 30-28. Lappin throws it up to Marlow in the front court. That's a dangerous choice there. She was double teamed, sits out of bounds, and it'll belong to the Lady Devil. Let them play. May as well. Let us see what they have. Williams side out of bounds, throws it in to Lappin. Now to Miller, between the circle. 3.33 to go in the third quarter. It's 30-28, Lady Devils by two. Door in the right corner, back to Miller. Miller will hold. Had Lappin cut to the basket, got behind the defense, shot blocked, though, by Wright. Rebounded by Shadow was up, Goreville, she gets it to Wright. What a play that was. Up front, Wright, leaves it for Miller. Miller spins the top of the key, down the lane, kicks it left, left wing, right. She goes baseline, left side, shot from 10, no good. Williams on the rebound from the Lady Devils. She gets it to Lappin, up to Miller. Miller will get across the timeline. Quickly the other way. Defense back. Miller loses it. Now it gets to Thor. Thor on the floor jump ball coming again. They're up to the old tricks in the first quarter, Danny, of trying to throw it into the paint because the back door play worked a couple of times. So now they think that every time they can go underneath. And when there's four black uniforms in that paint, you're not going to find any dry paint in there. It's going to be a turnover more often than not, just like it was there. Playing a little too fast. Sometimes you can play fast break basketball, but you can also play a little too fast. You're going to slow it down, obviously, and just kind of let your numbers catch up offensively, work it around the perimeter and be patient. Left uh, Orville tipped away and stolen. There comes Lady Devils. Miller on the right side into the front court on the right wing. Back up top of the key to Lappin. Lappin has it, throws it underneath to Marlow. Chest is fitted to Miller to Lappin top of the key. Thought about the three-shot fake foul. And Lappin will go line and shoot two foul on Jessica Wright. Her first team third. While they set up the free throws, we pass to the bottom of the hour. We need to pause for station identification on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. Streaming worldwide on MyWithersRadio.com. This is 94.1 FM WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion, Effingham. A free service from Withers Broadcasting. First free throw was missed by Lappin. She makes the second. One out of two, and it's a 31-28. Lady Devil leading with 2.30 to go in the third quarter. Orville has the basketball. Pritchett, top of the key to Webb. 
Webb will dribble, and now ball tipped away by Door, stolen by Williams. Williams across the timeline, lob pass, door left block, over to Wheeler, up and in. Great interior passing as Miller scores, and it's a five-point lead for the Lady Devils, 33-28. Right on the left side, ball tipped, stolen by Door, up to Miller, it's a foot race. Miller has it in front of Shadowins, layup, no good, but a foul. Shadowins will pick up her second. Fourth on the team, and Miller go to the line to shoot two. Chris is one of those deals. Chelsea Miller is a one-woman fast break as quick as she is. Hard to be a track star back to the basket, but Shadow has somehow kept up with her. Was able to get the contact and at least evaded the three-point play. And that'll be free throws. As first free throws miss. However, if you can't be a one-woman fast break, you can't make free throws. Substitutions in Miller and Cavins in for the Black Cats. Out is Jessica Wright and Marby Martin. As Coach Helton continues to go deep down his bench as he accustomed does. Second free throw is good. Miller gets one out of two. Big game for her, 16. And it's 34-28. That's the biggest lead of the game right now. For either side. That's what Valeria Waltonville is going to pressure. They're going to not guard the inbounds. They're going to pressure, at least show something. We'll see what the defense is. Miller with it. Now to a cutting web. At the timeline, double teamed in the backcourt. Timeout, Coach Helton. Another new defense by Coach Metcalf there to throw Gorville off their game. Well, they built a six-point lead here into the second half. And you just really look at what they're doing, and it's sloppy as they've been at times on the offensive possession, Danny. Metcalf's defense has been a lot, forcing a lot of turnovers here on the defensive end in the left court and, and using that to their advantage to get these points. It's been an impressive. And, again, when you get to watch two guys coach, and, and there's a lot of said about coaches who can get things ready in practice, but a lot of be said about coaches who can make the move on the fly in a game in the heat of the moment. Coach Metcalf and Coach Helton, two of the better ones in the girls' side of the game that can do that on the fly and make those changes as the game is going on. Well, exactly. It could be a chess match down the stretch. and. And just with what we've seen here tonight, Danny, it's very thrilling to be able to take in a game like this. As we go after the timeout, Goreville has the basketball side out of bounds on the home side of the gymnasium here at Cesar Valer. Big crowd, Justin Maroon, an even bigger student body on the Cesar Valer side. Great to see the students show out in force. We like seeing that, whether we're at Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Cesar Valer, Waltonville, wherever. Lots of students being good atmosphere. 1-3-1 one, one zone by the Lady Devils. Gorbill with a basketball. Miller throws it right side to Pritch. To Pritch. And now left side. Long three on the way by Haley. Short rebounded by Williams for the Lady Devils. They lead by six. That's what Miller Waltonville does. 34-28. Door to Miller on the right side into the front court. Right baseline Williams. Now spin. Shoot from 15. Glass no good. Rebound door. Shot blocked out of bounds. Foul's going to be on Webb or first. Team fifth. And that'll send number 44, 42, top Rachel Marlowe to the line to shoot two. Lady Black Cats down by six. Only one loss this year to Vienna. Marlowe makes the first. She'll get one more. It's a seven-point lead for Lady Devils with 91 seconds to go here in the third. What a performance here by Lady Devils in this third quarter. We're up a touchdown at this point. Led by four to break. Trying to extend the lead. That shot no good. Tipped and rebounded by Goreville. That is right. She'll throw it in the front court to Shadow. One leaves it for Miller. Miller between the circle. Spins at the free throw line. Kicks it left wing to right. Right dribbles down. Throws nobody underneath. It's recovered by Goreville. Haley kicks it out. Three ball away from Pritchett. No good. Rebound. Kicks out. Marlowe and right battle for it. Right has it for Goreville. She goes left baseline. Running one hitter. Good. Oh, it rattled in and out. Went halfway down and came back out. Rebounded by Lappin, stolen away, up and no good by number 34, Cavins. It's rebounded by Miller. She gets the door up to Lappin. Into the front court. Right box pass to Marlowe. She has to dribble back out to the corner to recover. Miller launches a three. It's going to go glass. It's no good. Tipped out again by Marlowe to Lappin. Lappin kicks it right side to Miller to go inside the door. Spin move on the block. Shot no good in the foul. And door will go line and shoot two. Danny, I'm kind of curious where the fascination with the outside shots come from over the past couple of basketball minutes. Don't know, but that's the 16 foul in Gloreville. Fouls reversed there in the second half. Familiar faces, new places. Bank with Ray and Bria. Our community first banks new 42nd Street location in Mount Vernon. 
Welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. Doran scores her first point to the game. As you told Rick Metcalf, to start with, hey, if she only has one point, you have an eight-point lead. Would you believe it? I'm not sure he would. She has been a force this year for the Lady Devils. Eight-point lead, 36-28 for the Lady Devils, and make it nine. Doran hits them both, and it's 37-28 with 30 seconds to go. Right on the left wing. They'll play catch around the perimeter. It's see Steve Gorgo will go for the final shot on the right wing with it as Haley. They play a rack around the right on the left wing. They throw it inside. Ball tip stolen away. Williams has his jump ball coming. Oh, a foul. Woo. I thought it was a jump ball. I thought that's what was coming. Apparently not. Norville has picked up their 17th foul. That is on number 34, Madison Cabin. Her second foul in stereo as the Lady Devils will go the other way. That's more than stereo. Williams will go the other end and shoot the one and one. Bailey Jones is going to check in for the Lady Devils. And checking out will be Tasha Door. What a game here in this one. As we're going to near the end of the third quarter, the Lady Devils are going to have a lead here. The amount will figure out. And Williams missed the first. The rebound goes to Lady Black Cats with 20 seconds to go. Into the front court is Cabin. Ball tipped by Miller. That's going to be a foul. Miller recovered it for Goreville, but Miller for Fester Little Waltonville fouled her. That's Miller's third, team third on Lady Devils. Maddie Garner is going to check in. She'll get Miller. So she'll pick up her third foul here having to play defense. Lady Devils killing her 1 3 1. Black Cats, Lady Black Cats went out in front of their basket. They throw it into Miller with 12 seconds. Left side to Cavins with 10. Skip pass across right side to Jessica Wright. She comes down the lane, has to recover with six. Get past right side to Haley. Three ball for the horn. It's good. Darnell Haley hits a three to end the third quarter. And after three quarters, it is Sexaville, Walkville 37, Doraville 31. Back for the fourth quarter here in the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Clean up on once a year savings at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Get 70% off all Christmas and winter decor. We'll save 15 to 30% off your favorite furniture from Lazy Boy, Flex Dill, Roy Hill, Lane, Sealy Bedding, the Paula Dean Collection, and loads of new home decor and wall decor, new ceramics, clocks, mirrors, and more. Newell Furniture in the General Store. Cleaning up, restocking, and offering you savings galore. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. For more scores and insight, follow us on Twitter at 94 Sports. Now back to the showcase on WMIX. Welcome back to Sats and Valera. Three quarters in the book. The Lady Devils lead Goreville 37 31. Denny Zolinski with Chris Hugo alongside. Lady Devils have it. Marlowe in the corner. Lost to the ground. Stolen away by Goreville. Bodies everywhere. Webb has it. Throws it across the right. She has to recover. It's pinball action in the back court. Here comes Goreville into the front court. Right, dribbles to the left side, gets it to Miller. Miller to the top of the deep free throw line. Now throws it in the right corner to Haley. She had a big three at the end of the quarter. It's another. Darnell Haley with back-to-back threes. And the Lady back to cats are back to within three, 37-34. What a comeback by the Lady Black Cats. She trails doubles by nine, 37-28 with under a minute to go. Lappin has it right side to Marlowe. Marlowe tries to throw inside to Tosh Shore. The ball is kicked. College level, the shot clock will reset here. It'll be out of bounds. Lady Devils lead 37-34 with five locations in Mount Vernon, Dixon, and Woodlawn. Community First Bank is proud to be the official voice of the Jefferson County Basketball Federal Case. Welcome back to Personal Bank with member FDIC. Williams has it inside the door on the out of bounds. Door shot block, no good in a foul. Tosh and Dora go to the line and shoot two. Another foul on Goreville. That is on number 34, Madison Cavins, her third. And unlike the first half, the Lady Devils are the ones getting to the foul line. Well, they're going to start making these free throws. They were five of nine. A little bit better there in the third quarter, but still that's just 55%. You'd like to see that closer to 70. 
First free throw by Thor is long off the mark. She'll get one more. If you want to win big ball games, you got to make free throws. That's what the, these two teams face here in this one. She will get one more. That one is also no good. Webb gets the rebound, tips it over to Miller. Shelby Miller up the right side for Gorgo. Goes to the rim, uncontested shot blocked on a straight defense by Lappin. Help side, and the Lady Devils go the other way. Lady Devils go, and there it is, a double dribble. Lappin got called for double dribble. Back on this side, Madison Cavins has come up lame. She's holding an ankle or leg, I should say. And she will walk off on her own power. And we're going to have somebody leave early and get to listen to our broadcast, it looks like. Here comes Jessica Wright. And we'll have a pause in the action. And while we tell you that, you can follow us on Twitter at 94 Sports for up-to-date broadcast updates on this game, other sports and information, as well as go to our Facebook site, 9WMIX Sports. Lots of information there. You can like it there as well. Too many birds flying in here. I'd say... Unhappy, future spectator. Yeah. 94.1. Yeah. FM. Star rating. You can help us out. Support our sponsors, please. <laughs> the Lady Black Cats have the basketball. Shadow one's on the left wing. And he'll throw a left side. Now to right. Right in the left corner. Top of the key pass to Miller. She's going to launch a three for the tie. No good off the mark. Door skies for the rebound. Webb for Gorville has it. Oh, man. Ray Lappin. Was going to block the shot on Webb, and she got up in the air and thrown to the floor just because she was hanging on. And that's her third team fourth. Nothing you know, wrong or ill-advised in that play. Just she was trying to block the shot, and the strength of Webb lifted her up. And as she released to shoot it, Lappin fell to the ground. Shot on the way, no good. <laughs> Free throws are not a favorite anybody in this game right now. Maybe we'll swing it the other way and say bad free throw shooting might lead to some good stuff. Been a little bit of a struggle at this point. Just a little. Not much. Second one is May. 37-35. It's a two-point game. It was a nine-point lead for the Lady Devils just moments ago. 6.25 to go in the game. Lady Devils, 37-35. Pressure by Goreville. It's a turnover. Miller lost it out of bounds and the turnover. I have some contact involved. Nah, there's a lot of contact involved in that one. That should have been a foul, but nobody was there to pick it up. And the one that was on top that was looking the other way. Timeout, Lady Devils, as Gorville came at the pressure. And they turned it over. 6.20 to go, 37.35. I'll let you elaborate more on that play, because there was oh, a lot of you contact had something there. To, <laughs> you had something developing here at the timeline with, with Miller. I didn't even see who the offender was for Gorville. It was obviously nothing intentional. <laughs> Just ran like a bull in the china shop, ran like a linebacker who found a seam and found a hole in the O-line, or the D-line, rather, and it just it kind of threw Miller just a little bit. It looked like she's holding her shoulder there for a moment, but she's okay and probably should have been a foul, but if there's a no-call there, it's really not a, not a huge deal. But, man, there's a lot of contact. There we go. Play resumes. Goreville inbounds. They throw it in to Haley on the right side. She's hit a couple big threes into third, begin the fourth. Inside the Webb, we're tied. Allison Webb starting to find her way in the paint. It's tied at 37 with six to go. A 9-0 run by Goreville. Lady Devils can't get in. It's five seconds call for turnover. Now it could be a T. Lady Devils lucky they didn't get a technical there as Williams plans with the floor and hit the bottom of the backboard. Luckily, it was not a technical. Well, the problem right now, Danny, there's no... No ball handler, so to speak, that's able to inbound the box. Your ball handler has to be the one that tries to make something happen on offense down low on the other end. Right has the top of the key. Tip is stolen away by SQ. Now foul coming up on Goreville. Darnell Haley for reaching in, and Lady Devils will shoot free throws. That, that was a good catch by Megan SQ there at the left elbow there in the backcourt. Rick Metcalf just put her in for Michaela Williams. She had a little bit of trouble hanging on to the basketball tonight, but probably had the biggest grab of the ball game right there. SQ will go line and shoot the one and one. First is short. Rebound the shadow ones of Goreville. And the Lady Black Cats have an opportunity to take the lead. Left corner with it is Webb. She is hammered, for the say the least. She gets it back out to right. They try to throw it inside. Shadow one's off her hands. SQ and 
Oh, Shadow and Cy up. That's going to be a foul on Shadow and her third. That's the 10th team foul on Goreville, and the Lady Devils will shoot two the rest of the way. That's the same thing that just happened about two seconds earlier at the block. Yep. Ooh. I'm all for right. I'm all for letting them play. Just need a little bit more consistency, and I, I don't blame Mr. Saunders for that one because he wasn't there at that particular point. He happened to see that one, and it's usually the second person. And always gets caught. As you missed the first free throw scoreboard update, JV game here tonight, Goreville 1, 41-34. College basketball, Kentucky leads Auburn in the second half on the road, 51-47. Missouri over Iowa State, 66-61. As SQ makes one out of two, it's 38-37. First time the Lady Devils have scored in a while. That scoreboard update brought to you by Scott Owens and State Farm Insurance, help, dedicated to helping you get the right coverage with the discounts you deserve. Give Scott a call at 242-3770, like a good neighbor. Scott Owens is there. Lady Blackcast with a basketball right. Leaves it for Willer. She'll swing to the right side, bounce past the shadow with the right block underneath, pops inside the web. Shot's going to come on the floor. And Ray Lappin has just picked up her fourth stop. Chris, she can ill afford to get up there and be eliminated from the game. That's the last thing they needed because she's been the one who's been taking some of the pressure off of Chelsea Miller, who has a game-high 16 points, and you can't have that happen now. And I feel like all I've done is point out the bat of the officials. When I see a girls' basketball game, these are the three I typically want. Here comes Goreville. Outside with it on the wing is Shadow, and she'll come down the lane. Uncontested shot and a foul. I have been very impressed this evening with Tiffany Shadow, Handling the basketball and getting to the rim as she just threw a foul and making SQ of the Lady Devil. Going the line to shoot two. See if she can add to her two points. She may not show up, show up a lot in the scoring column, Danny, but she played some big minutes and made some big things happen. It's 38 all. This game was a 37-29 Lady Devils lead with about a minute to go. And since then, Goreville has been on 11 to 1 run, makes that 12 to 1. And Shadow One hits them both. It's 39-38. Lady Devils down one to Goreville now. Five to go. Miller bounce past Williams on the left block. Williams struggles. Tip hand stolen away by Wright. Here comes Goreville. One on three. Right back tap. Miller so off of Miller's hands out of bounds, and it'll belong to Goreville underneath her own backpack. I see the call there. Her foot was on the line before it was tapped out by Goreville. A good call by Eric Saunders. <laughs> I appreciate officials who explained what happened. I'm going to put my new toy down. I, I just saw something I didn't know what to do. Shadow one's on a box set for Goreville underneath. Throws it in the web on the right block. Spins on door. Goes right. Goes back to her left shoulder. Shot no good. A right shoulder. Door on the rebound. Nice defense by door. Gets it to Miller. Miller has to pick up the dribble. She just traveled. Got away with it. Got it to door. Door with it will come up. Now up to Eskew across the timeline with about 9.8 seconds on the 10 point count. It's all stolen by Goreville. Dipped out of bounds. Ooh, that's the blur. Walton will have the basketball. There was nowhere near the baseline. We get a challenge flag. Uh, we need one. That should, that should be a play resuming. That probably ends up in a, a turnover. Oh, backdoor inbound play. Door is wide open on a screen across. And it's 40-39. Lady Devils by one. Four and a half to go in this one. And it is going to go down to the wire. Goreville with a basketball. Miller to the right side. Throws it back to the left to Shadow ones. Now left wing pass to Haley. Haley will dribble between the circles. Throw it left side to right. Right to the free throw line. Down the lane she goes. Shot no good but a foul. Jessica Wright. Oh, they're saying it's out of bounds. But it'll be a one-on-one because Williams fouled Jessica Wright. And that's a 17th foul on the Lady Red Devils. With five Jefferson County branches and responsive quality service for all your accounts, Community First Bank would like to be the first to say, welcome back to personal banking, member FDIC. First free throw is up and in by right. We're tied at 40. She'll get one more. During the Setzer Auto Body postgame show, Chris and I will also pick a Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game. Crossroads Community Hospital is for the hospital. what health care should be. I like Jessica Wright. She's just been a little, bit, a little quiet here in the second half. Free throw for the lead is good. Goreville back on top. It is 41-40. They will press. Williams throws it in to Miller. Double team, but she gets it up the door up into the front court. Coming from behind, though, is Jessica Wright. She throws it between her legs. She runs into the wall, and it's stolen away by Goreville. And that one touches the baseline as we go on. That's a travel. That is Avon and Mary Kay. Goreville turned it over uncontested as Webb, well, but nobody around her. She drug her pivot foot throwing the ball. That ball was on the L and Red Devils and no call. Yeah. Play on. 
as I like to say, play on. Miller left side to Tasha Door on the wing for the Lady Devils. The Lady Black Cats have a lead, and they have the basketball as Webb Seals on the pass. She'll go up around Miller and miss the layup, rebounded by Marlow. Marlow has it stolen away by Webb on the back side. Door has it back. Door will have it. Now gives it to Chelsea Miller across the timeline. Throws in the right corner. Eskew double team back to Door in the right wing. Inside pass, left side. Door shot good. Tasha Door scores to put the Lady Devils up by one. 42-41. Three and a half to go in a game. And what a game it has been. Biggest lead has been nine by the Lady Devils in the third. I like, I like Webb using her build, Danny, to force some turnovers, but just can't, hasn't been able to finish on the offensive end. Webb throws it to Wright. And we'll have a blocking foul, much to the chagrin of the Lady Devils fans across the way. A lot of chagrin there, but good catch by Darren Toffel. One foot was up in the air, and if there's any active motion there, you're not going to get the charge. Yep. And going to the line will be Jessica Wright. She has been there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This will be free throw attempt number 10 for Jessica Wright. She is six out of nine. Boy, she's been good tonight for the strike. Yes, she has. She been in this ball game at times when they couldn't get a good look for a field goal. Chris Hugo cannot jinx her. She makes the first. Well, and will get one more. Probably just not necessarily a jinx, but maybe it would be later on down the stretch perhaps, but... Just a great player. I'm looking forward to seeing her again on the 30th as we see this rematch down at Goreville. Our second free throw is up and no good. Rebounded by Marlowe. Marlowe gets it to Miller to go into the front court. Miller to break. Throws underneath and nobody is a tip to the floor. Bounced off bodies. Miller's on the floor. And Rick Mack, somebody called a timeout. It's a jump ball. I was going to say, nobody really had a possession because nobody could call the timeout. It didn't look like now there's timeout. Now we got a timeout. Timeout, Lady Devils. 3-10 to go in the game. 42 all. And Chris Gorville's going to have the possession here, I believe, after the jump ball. And this is where you get to see some X and O's here between Coach Metcalf and Coach Helton down the stretch. Well, it is. It's a tie game. Three minutes, ten seconds to play. Tied at 42. You're going to see these pawns and rooks and bishops moved a little bit. I don't really know how the game of chess is played all that well. I can never get a grasp of it. Well, I'm played on the computer. Though. Well, I, I left out the kings and queens because you don't get that checkmate. Last thing he wants a stalemate here, obviously. But that's what we have right now, tied at 42. Good time to call a timeout. Rick Metcalf trying to get one of those famous defenses in planet here and, and just see what he can kind of make happen, see if he can force a turnover because Gorville in this second half is unlike, not unlike, Spencer Blair Waltonville, turning the ball over quite a bit. Now, I'm telling you what, this has been a great game here tonight. 42 all, 310 to go. Distracted by the song. This is among, and, among my all-time favorites. And the best part is, you and I will get to do the second yeah, right. this game when the Lady Devils go to Goreville later this month on a Monday. Look forward to that. I'm hoping that uh, one of the trips will cook us supper that night in Goreville. I know one of them's here one of them's listening. If not, I'll be more than happy to send a text to what food I want. Although we, we've been promised they're not in the booth, so if we hey, can yeah, happen, there could be yeah. some other facets to our broadcast that we don't normally get to do oh. on the road that we might bring. Yep. Shadow ones has it for the Lady Black Cats. Throws in the corner to Miller. Miller around Marlowe. The Lady Devils play a different defense, kind of like a Meba defense. Shot no good. Rebound to Goreville. Shot up and in for the lead. That is Madison Cavins came back in after her little bump and injury. And the Lady Black Cats lead by two, 44-42. Devils throw up in the front court, and Gore throws it over the top of Marlow out of bounds, and it'll belong to, <laughs> it'll belong to Goreville. We, <laughs> we have a cooking offer. Two of them, in fact. Across the timeline comes Miller. From the one in attendance or the one listening? One That'd listening. be pretty impressive. Yeah, one in one listening, yes. Yeah. He's too busy watching over here. The other one will cook. Shadow one throws it left corner to Cavett. Cavins south top to key right, right corner shadow and three for the five point lead, no good. Ball hits the floor door, hasn't a foul on Goreville. So we're gonna shoot two. Goreville leads 44-42, making the long walk to the other end. That foul's on Tiffany Shadow and her fourth. Long walk to the other end for Tasha Door. She's gonna shoot two free throws, two of four on the night so far for Door. Big free throws are 2.14 to go in this one. Lady Devils down by two. Shot is up and in. No sweat for her on the first one. Seven in the game for Doors. She'll get one more. Did he say what he's going to cook? Not yet. 
We've had one of his baseball games on the air. Oh, I know. That super sectional last year. Yeah. Second free throw long off the mark. Rebounded by Webb. High for the rebound. She'll get it to Shelby Miller. Might be the response. You like rabbit? Oh, well, yeah. We had, never had it, but I'll try it. Rabbit's good stuff. Right side with I'll it. Try it. Take it free. Yeah. And she's tripped up. She's going to shoot free throw. Can't trip up ball at basketball dribbler. That goes to the floor. That foul is on Chelsea Miller, her floor. So now if you're a sensible or Walton Bill, Chris, you got Laffin and Miller at 4,000 apiece. Now it's Excellent. interesting. Every time. It'll be the one-on-one. Jessica Wright back there again. Your top two scores is 4,000 nowadays. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. And if you're not, if you're the Black Cat, are you going to try to start taking some charges underneath? Yeah, run right. them get down low and get them to foul out. Oops. Mark's in the wrong spot. Can't do that. She missed that free throw. She made this one. And it's 45-43. Lady Black Cats by two. They're looking to add to their lead. Shot no good. Rebound Lady Bell. As they come the other way, laughing across the timeline between the circles. Throw the left side to Williams. 150 to go in the game. Lady Devils down two. Williams throws the right side to Laffin. Laffin dribbles to the top of the key. Now dribbles to the left side. Laffin has a pick. But it's out of bounds. As right keeps it out of bounds that way off her hand, out of bounds. I believe I deserve to enter one of our listeners who send me scores regularly. As Williams has the inbound side out of bounds. We appreciate all those of you listening on 94.1 WMIX as well as MyWithersRadio.com. Laughing. Two door on the left. Double tipped out of bounds by right again. Where he crossed past the top of the hour. Little pause for station identification on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. Like WMIX Sports on Facebook. This is 50,000 Watts of the Showcase on 94.1 FM WMIX. Mount Vernon, Marion, Effingham. A free service from Withers Broadcasting. Back to Sessler, Valera Waltonville. The Lady Devils threw it in. And the ball right tipped it for Goreville off of Lappin's hand. And it goes out of bounds to Goreville. They have the ball in their front court with 128 to go in the game. 45-43. Gotten a little loud there. I apologize. Shadow one throws it underneath. Shot by Kevin's no good in the foul. No, my ears are probably starting to drain. I can hear again. Oh, I apologize. No, you're fine. All right. You can't help Mother Nature. Speaking of which, you mentioned somebody saying that scores only us dinner. If they send us scores, don't we technically owe them dinner? Well, probably. If that's one, not how it works. If one is texting us about dinner, all of them send us scores regularly, and we appreciate all our listeners and our score givers. Throughout the year, we can't thank them enough because we send them scores and they send us scores. Of course, we have a timeout on the floor here. Minute 21 left to go in the game. Regulation, possibly. Two-point lead for the Black Cats. Two-point deficit, obviously, for Lady Devils. And Danny, I'm going to reverse it. Traditionally, on Rams and Lady Rams broadcast, I'm asking you this question. I pre- right here is where I prefer your analysis over mine. Take us into the huddle. Well, if you're obviously Goreville, 45 all lead, or four, they're up by two. So their key is to take care of the basketball and make the Lady Devils chase. And if you get fouled, you've got to make free throws. If you're Rick Metcalf in that other huddle, you've got to come up with some creative ways to get a stop, maybe change the defense or two as he's done from time to time, come out with a different variation of a trap in the half court or a different man-to-man. How you want to do things to force a turnover and then play it from there. It's going to be interesting to see what goes on here as we go on because both teams have played a lot of energy. And I think at this point... A rather warm day for January outside, as it has been recently. Jim's kind of hot, big crowd. What fatigue factor is going to kick in here in the last minute or so? I think we'll find out after these free throws. Cavins will be at the line. That shot is up and no good. Now timeout, I somebody. And we'll go with one more free throw. Cavins will have another. 45-43, Goreville on top by two. Our second free throw is up and no good. Rebound tip. Webb has it for Goreville on the right block. Double teamed. Jump ball goes to Lady Devils. He got tied up. Turn over to Goreville. Lady Devils with a basketball. Williams will give it to Laffin. Lady Devils down two. They got the stop as I said. They need it. Now the Lady Devils have it. Laffin dribbles to the left side. We'll go back to Williams' top of the key. Right wing pass to Chelsea Miller. Miller lob inside door shot. Webb foul. Webb foul first, second. And that will send Tasha Dorr to the line to shoot two to try to tie this game up. Big free throw series. We hit the minute six mark of this fourth quarter. Going to have to knock some down here. One and four tonight from the line. 
I'm happy. The Flames have all burned and been beaten again. Shot up and in. Hot score gets one. I hate that app already. 45-44. Love this. Does it have all? Is it just you players that have everybody? I got everybody. I got this. Oh! oh I, don't, I don't hate that it. Other, that app here. I got four-letter app. Yeah, the four-letter app. Second lead shot is up and in. We're tied. Oh, my. 45 all. 105 to go in the game. Corville has the ball. Webb gets it to right. Over the top to Miller. She'll bring it into the front court. Miller harassing Miller there. On the right wing, we're under a minute to go. Tied at 45. Fourville and Seth Miller, Waltonville. Miller leaves it for Webb on the right wing. She'll pick up her dribble. Throws it left side, Shadowin. Shadowin gets around her man. Open layup coming up and in. Shadowin puts the Lady Blackcats on top by two. 47-45 and a travel. Miller threw it to Lappin, and Webb was in her way, and she spun and didn't put the dribble down. Turnover to Gorville. I think they're more frustrated about the fact they left that left side of the lane wide open for Shadow to dribble through and get the easy bunny. Here we go. Inbounds to right. Gets to throw it back to Cabins. Not pretty. Cabins to Webb. Timeout, Goreville. Probably a good thing when your post player is getting right to for three up top. Well, and right was underneath, underneath the basket, and out of bounds. Lame a little bit. Banged her knee on the padding on the north wall there at Susquehanna High School. 47, 45, 45, something like that. Goreville leads by two with 30 seconds, 36 seconds left. That's a guy after your own heart here playing a little bit of jump. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully, if you're a Sessler or Waltonville, there will be a jump ball. If they can't do anything but tie it up, we'll get another jump. 36.9 to go. Goreville leads the Lady Devils at Sessler or Waltonville, 47, 45, here on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. And the atmosphere has been rocking tonight. A kudos credit goes out to the Setchabler student body over to our right across the way. Been here all night. Throwback uniforms, captain and Neil hat, as well as any, all the kids top to bottom. That old section over there, the Red Devils den is filled. Gorville inbound in front of their own basket. It is Cabins on the left side. Throws in the left corner to right. They get it in to Miller on the left wing. She'll dribble out. 30 seconds to go. When will Lady Devils elect the foul? Miller can't because she's got four. Miller for Goreville gets the right on the left baseline. Kicks it into Webb. Webb has it. Jump ball coming. And that's what it is. And it'll go back to Goreville. Now, if you're Lady Devils, how long again do you wait before you foul? You're down two, and Goreville has it underneath their own basket the inbound. I don't know, but business just picked up. 47-45. Cabins to Traker. Look, throws it out top of the key. She gets to Webb, and she fouled. Oh, wow. Webb was knocked to the ground by Gore, and they called a walk, and now the Lady Devils have an opportunity to die or take the lead. I probably would have gone like it for the foul there, but big break for the Devils. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. 18 seconds to go. Miller threw it to nobody. Chelsea Miller threw it to nobody. Marlow wasn't out there. Well, yeah. made it there. And they wanted that to go back the other way. But, Danny, I don't care if somebody tipped it or not. You get in that corner right there where the officials can't see. You've got to go after it. Can't just let it go out. Gorville has the basketball. Miller with it will come across the timeline with eight. Lady Devils got a foul. And that's a shot. It went off the wet hand off the rim. Miller had it for Lady Devils, and she fouled. On a loose ball, Miller got a hand in on Chelsea Miller. And that's a foul to Shelby Miller. And Chelsea Miller walked the other way. With 4.9 seconds to go, Lady Devils down two, and Miller goes the line to try to tie it up with two free throws. Mike Kelton's going to call a timeout here, I would have guessed. I would assume. Maybe not. I'd go right now. Well, he's going to wait. All right. He's shaking his head a little bit. First free throw up, and in. We have a 47-46 game. Miller has one more free throw to tie it up. 4.9 seconds to go. Miller is going to make the second. We're tied. Four, se- four seconds left. Gorgo gets it in, and they will call timeout. 3.9 to go. We're tied at 47 in a game we thought would be exactly like this. Well, <laughs> it's never been everything we thought it was. Never that big lead from Gorgoville, though. Central Valier Waltonville had the lead. Up nine at one point in the third quarter until about the minute mark. They had the momentum for a while. Gorville started to have the momentum late. Had this game won for a bit there, but got a bit of a, I don't even know what you'd call it. Just a foul call that helped, helped the Lady Devils out significantly. Got the tying free throws, and now 
if you can get any form of a defense here to prevent the shot from getting off or force a bad shot, you're going to overtime. 47 all. It's worth noting we have not had an overtime game all year yet on WMIX, and we have done a lot of games. We're well, surprised. 75 in. Well, boys and girls wise this year and more to come, we have done a ton of games this year. Only one night off in the month of January, not known as the Sabbath. That's the 25th. Oh, good friend of ours, birthday. 3.9 seconds to go. Gorville length of the court. Webb will inbound. They are defending the inbound pass. Webb holds above her head. Look, look. Can't get it in. Yeah. Don't invite Gorville, but Gorville has it back. With one half court shot. He's no good. We're going to overtime. We'll keep it here as we go into overtime tied at 47. Lady oh Devil down, had a nine point lead at the end of the third. Gorville stormed back, back and forth throughout. Gorville had a two point lead till the end. And then two free throws by Chelsea Miller ties it up at 47 apiece. And we have four more minutes of basketball coming up at least. And they had struggled making their free throws on and off. The Lady Devils, Chelsea Miller, give her a lot of credit for making two free throws back to back in a high pressure situation. Free basketball here at Central Miller High School this overtime, as we like to say. And it has been an outstanding game as we total things up. Here as we go to overtime, our first of the year. Lots of people in foul trouble. Lots of people looking to go here. But we have what has turned out to be a a great game. (laughs) Oh, here we go. We got a score update coming in from one of our friends. A black diamond game with note, which was at the Carterville Winter Classic. DRC, a team we saw earlier this year, lose to Texas Blair Waltonville. The Lady Tornadoes beat Carterville 44-34. Here we go. Overtime from Cesar Valera. 47 all. And we'll jump it up. So the jump by Van Halen was a precursor. Tip controlled by the Lady Black Cat. Everybody gets back into the seat. They won't be in it for long in this overtime. What a matchup we've had here. Between the circles of Shadow and throws it left side to right. She'll hold against the 1 3 1 skip pass right side to Miller. To Shadow and top the key back to right on the left side. She will hold above her head for Corville. She'll dribble and now throw it back out to Shadow and top the key. Leaves it for Miller. Miller inside to Cavins, outside Shadow and. She'll skip past left wing to right. Right will skip it back across to Shadow and. Shadow and dribbles to the right elbow back to Miller. Miller on the right wing. We'll throw it now left side to right. They play around the perimeter with a 1 3 1 by the Lady Devils inside Cavins in the lane. Outside Shadow and three for the lead is good. Missing Shadow and for their first three of the game, and it's 50 47 Gorville. That's a big three to start the overtime period. The Lady Devils struggling. Miller to Lappin across the timeline to the top of the key. Lappin dribbles to the right side. Fade away 15 footer. No good off the mark. Rebound Webb. Bad shot there by the Lady Devils. Webb gets it up to right across the timeline. Right, left side to Cavins. Cavins down the lane. Left good. It is a 5 0 run by the Lady Black Cats to begin the overtime. 52 47. Miller has it. We'll go across the timeline. At the volleyball line. Throws it left side to Lappin. Man to man by the Lady Black Cats. Two and a half to go in the game. In overtime here at Cesar Valer. Lappin gets it to door and it's a travel. Yes, she did. That's a good call by Devin Hall. She that did is make a great a call. Play. Yep. And the only person in the gym that knew at a moment it happened was Kevin Hall. Great call by him. Now, if you're susceptible, you're down five. Devils are just gassed at this point. Yes. And we talked about the end of that quarter. Talked about they might be fatigued. The team get tired. And they look tired. Shadowin's going to get another layup. Missed the layup. Wide open. Rebounded by Marlowe, the Lady Devils. Miller has it. Will come up the right side. Chelsea Miller throws it to Williams. Left side. Had an open layup. Pull up from ten. Missed. Tipped around. Rebounded by Cavins of Goreville. She's going to dribble into the front court. Got to go for the open layup if it's there. Two minutes to go. Devils down five. What will the Lady Devils do here? How long will they play defense before they have to foul? On the left side is Miller. Guarded by Lappin. Miller dribbles to the right side. Leaves it for Cabins. 150 to go in the game. Cabins out by the timeline. Spins travel. Good call. Two good calls back-to-back by this crew on turnover. One turnover apiece here in the overtime period. And checking in. Megan Eskew will check in. Rachel Marlowe will check out. Lady Devils are down 5, 52-47 with 146 to go in the game. Williams inbounds to Lassen. She's going to bring it up. Gorville's man-to-man. 140 to go in the game. Gorville scored all five points at overtime. 
Lappin has it. Jump ball. Goes back to Lady Devil. Sometimes a team that comes back and ties it up in overtime has a real struggle at times to get a point or two and get back in overtime. And it's happening here, and now Lady Devil's inbound. They'll call timeout. Well, it's a classic case that sometimes you put so much gas and just try to mount the comeback that you forget all about trying to get the victory. And, and it's, it's no different than a team whose only goal might be to win a conference championship or win 20 games. They lose sight of the much bigger picture. And I'm not saying that's exactly what's happened here. It's been, Rick Metcalf's done a great job of getting them back into this game. But sometimes you just run out of gas, especially when you have two players and your two leading scorers with four fouls feet. 135 to go here in the game in overtime. Goreville leads best of Lower Waltonville 52-37. A update on our Jefferson County Showcase. Some other fans would like to know. The Woodlawn Lady Warriors advance to the regional championships and not tomorrow. I sit down Friday at 6 p.m. The Lady Warriors beat Oakville tonight 29-25. They'll play host Breeze Friday at 6 p.m. So we appreciate that score update coming in. Here, Lady Devils call the timeout. They need points. They're down by a score of 52-47 with 1.35 to go. The Dorville Blackley Black Cats have scored all five points here in the overtime. Lady Devils will inbound. SQ gets it into Lappin in the backcourt. She'll come across. 1.30 to go. Lady Devils down five. White tips it away. Wright has it. Throws it back in to Chelsea Miller for the Lady Devils. Miller to SQ in the corner. Back to Miller on the left wing. She throws it in. It's tipped by Webb. Webb and Miller for Sester and Gore. Bill battle out. Miller has it for the Lady Devils. Up to Williams, left wing. Skip past right side, Lappin. 15 put on the way. He rolls around the iron. Williams rebound shot, no good. And a Webb foul for Goreville will send Allison. Check that. Michaela Williams in line to shoot two. Williams there to shoot two. The Lady Devils down by five. 52 47 here in overtime. All's quiet around the gym except on the Goreville side to our right. Shot up and in as they have some of their students there, and Williams makes the first. That's the first point for the Lady Devils in this overtime. 52-48, Goreville, 112 to go. Williams will shoot another. It's up and no good. Rebound tipped off Webb's hands. Captain recovers with Webb. Nice play by those two on the rebound. Miller has it for Goreville. One minute to go in the game. Lady Black Cats by four. And the Lady Devils pull another rabbit out of the hat here and get back into this one. Webb on an inside pass shot, no good. Rebound Miller. There's one stop that the Lady Devils need. Here comes Lappin. Throws it right side to Williams. Williams gets stolen, recovered by Webb of Goreville. Back to back stop. Goreville has it with 40 seconds to go. Lady Devils are going to have to give a foul. They can't catch up with Miller, though. Excuse me, they give the foul. And Miller will go to the line and shoot two. That would be Shelby Miller. This will be her second and third free throws of the night. She missed her first. Mike Kelton will clear the Lady Black Cats out of the lane with a four-point lead and 38 seconds to go. And Miller will be the only Lady Black Cat on the free throw line. Her shot is up and in. She'll get another. I guess the student section credit, they've been on that air ball all night, even after she spotted them a couple of times. And she spotted them since then, three in the game. Big free throw made there. Another one up and no good off the mark. Rebounded by Dort of Lappin. Lady Devils down five, 53, 48, 30 seconds to go. There's a reaching foul. Boy, Mike Kelton didn't need that. Jessica Wright just picked up her second foul, and that will stop the clock, which is important, the most important thing. And then Lappin goes line to shoot two with the clock stopped. Could make it a one-possession game, and she makes both. 53-48, Goreville leads by five. First free throw up and in. Lappin makes the first. She'll get one more. Tell you what, though, the beauty part about this co-op is it sends you to two-way, and you don't have to worry about Goreville in the postseason. No, you do not. Lappin with the shot makes it in. You do have to deal with some teams called Nashville, three cents, well, otherwise. That's right. But now you're going regional of Dewpoint here in Benton. Not, you wouldn't have to worry. Well, I guess you would see them before a super second. Mm-hmm. Black Cats inbounded. All right, get it up to Cabins. Cabins falls down the left wing. Timeout, Goreville. I want to say this. Great play by Cabins. She was on the floor, had two white jerseys coming at her. She was yelling timeout, as was Mike Hilton. Great right. play there. Exactly. And if you are in a place where you can yell for the timeout, your coach is going to bail you out. Just hold on to it. Don't move. And worst case scenario, somebody comes in and grabs the hold of the basketball, forces a jump ball, which is still in your favor. Winner of this game, might like Paradise City, that blast in the background. It's 53 all. It's been a great one. Goreville by three. We get to do another one here in a couple weeks at Goreville between these two teams. Yeah, we'll have Goreville on for a third time. Yeah. It'll be, it'll turn into the Johnson County basketball. Oh, yeah, before you know it. 
We'll be down at Goreville. Look forward to heading down there. It's been a while for me since I've been in Goreville for an athletic contest. And it's 53-50. Goreville has the lead. That's a good tune, man. I'll let that play. Goreville inbounds. Cabin's in front of the Goreville bench. Throws it in to Webb, and she's fouled. Foul given really fast by Door. Door fouls out. She's going to foul out with nine points by my unofficial total. Now, Webb is at the line with a three-point lead with 20 seconds to go, 21 seconds to go. You make two. It's a five-point game with 20 seconds. That really makes it difficult without some three-point shots going in. See what Webb does. First one's long off the mark. No good. Now, this one might be short. Usually, it's the opposite after you miss the first. Long or short. Need to make it. Here's Orgo. Second free throw again. Left it short of the back iron and made it. Looks like I said. 54-50 at 20 seconds to go. Lapping across the timeline. Levels deep points quickly down four. Miller with it goes baseline. She's going to try for two points. Shot missed. Miller gets her own rebound. Shot blocked Webb. Rebound SQ weak side. They need a three. Lapping. Pulls in. Gets a two up. No good. Rebound to Barlow and that's tackle and a foul. The Goreville Lady Black Cats are going to come in to assess their Valera Waltonville tonight and pick up a big road win. And that foul is on Ray Lappin. That's her fifth. She'll foul out with 14 points. But the gap to my point, Goreville comes in here, Chris, picks up a big hard-earned victory on the road against Cessna Valera Waltonville, and you've got to give credit to Lady Black Cats. Tournament tested, big game tested, showed it here in the overtime. Tournament test with battle approved. That's exactly what they did here tonight with sports battle come in. And, and you don't want to say steal a victory from the Lady Red Devils on their home floor, but, you know, kind of, you hate to distract by the text message, pardon me, but you, you either come in here, get a big victory tonight on the road, and keep that conference undefeated streak intact. Vintage Goreville here tonight for them in the last couple of years. Playing very well in big game situations. They missed both free throws there, but it's not going to matter. Lady Devils need a four point play, and Miller tried to get a shot into Miller, and it didn't work as they were trying to draw a foul. And that will wrap this one up in overtime. The Goreville Lady Black Cats have won this one in overtime at Central Blue Waltonville tonight by a final score of 54 to 50. We'll step out for a break, come back with the Central Auto Body Post Game Show here on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Lincoln Dealer. There is nothing more attractive than confidence, especially when it's got the looks of a 2012 Lincoln vehicle to back it up. So when you see Ford Square Mount Vernon, your confidence and ours will be at an all-time high because not only do you get a great offer, you also get our standard complimentary four-year 50,000-mile maintenance plan on a Lincoln MKX with first-of-its-kind sync with my Lincoln Touch technology on a loaded MKZ that's putting standards back into luxury on a Lincoln MKS that seemingly has everything, including the available technology to practically parallel park itself, and on a Lincoln MKT with more than just something for everyone. It has everything for everyone. It's time to get out there and see what's new. May I suggest a test drive in a new 2012 Lincoln at Ford Square Mount Vernon. Maintenance coverage includes a maximum of eight regularly scheduled maintenance services. Lincoln, it's not just luxury, it's smarter than that. Face it, life can be very complicated. You need to simplify, streamline, and save time wherever you can. Consider your financial and money management. Most families have multiple checking accounts, multiple incomes, savings accounts, mortgages, and more. Thankfully, at People's National Bank, things can be much simpler with just one app, pnb to go With pnb to go you can pay your bills, make transfers between your accounts, check your balances, and much more. Best of all, pnb to go is free. Download the pnb to go app today. People's National Bank. Member FDIC. Wireless carrier fees may apply. Does this sound familiar? I can't stand this job. I just wish I had time to go back to school, but with work and family... I know. I just enrolled in Rend Lake College's evening cosmetology program. They have evening classes that will even fit into your busy schedule. You can even graduate in less than two years. Classes are convenient to get to, and they're in Studio RLC in Mount Vernon. They even offer financial aid. What's it like? I've been out of school so long. It's not your typical take notes. Listen to a lecture program. We will learn the latest styles and trends in cosmetology, and it 
looks like we'll have fun doing it. We'll be out on the salon floor getting hands-on experience and getting to know all kinds of people. By the time we're done, we'll be ready to jump into a new career and love our jobs for once. Okay, how do I sign up? I called 618-242-8459, but you can also check out their website at rlc.edu slash studio rlc or stop by the RLC Marketplace in Mount Vernon. Sessor Auto Body would like to take a moment to remind everyone driving to and from the game to drive safe and be alert. Sometimes events happen beyond your control. When it does, take your vehicle to the collision pros. Sessor Auto Body is pre-approved by most insurance companies throughout Southern Illinois. This allows them to get the parts ordered quicker, getting you back on the road faster and in showroom condition. Sessor Auto Body, 602 South Park in Sessor, or call 625-3523. That's 625-3523. This is the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. The Sessor Auto Body Post Game Show starts now. Welcome back to Sessor Valero High School. Danny Fromitsky and Chris Hugo alongside in overtime tonight in what was a fantastic ball game. Corville beat Sessor Valero Waltonville 54 to 50. This is the Sessor Auto Body Post Game Show. They are pre-approved by most insurance companies. This means that's for auto body to get your vehicle back on the road faster. Next time you have a collision, see the collision pros at Sessor Auto Body, 602 South Park in Sessor. Lady Devils lose tonight, 54 to 50. We'll step out for a break and come back for the scoring and stats of this one here from Sessor Blair High School on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. Clean up on once a year savings at Newell Furniture in the General Store in Woodlawn. Get 70% off all Christmas and winter decor. Plus save 15 to 30% off your favorite furniture from Lazy Boy, Flex Steel, Roy Hill, Lane, Sealy Bedding, the Paula Dean Collection, and loads of new home decor and wall decor, new ceramics, clocks, mirrors, and more. Newell Furniture in the General Store. Cleaning up, restocking, and offering you savings galore. When it comes to bone and joint care, only one name should come to mind. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. Your fellowship-trained physician's first priority is specialized orthopedic care, ranging from total joint replacement and spine surgery to shoulder surgery and sports medicine. Our surgeons provide a wide range of specialized treatments that are unparalleled anywhere in Southern Illinois. Located on Veterans Memorial Drive in Mount Vernon and St. Mary's Good Samaritans in Campus, the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. Discover the difference. A coach house garage is money well spent On craftsmanship that's sure to get compliments Don't cut corners on your garage, it adds value to your home That's why you need to see the professionals at Coach House Garages Choose from a variety of Coach House Garage designs Or they'll build one to your design For a dealer near you, check the yellow pages in Mount Vernon Or go online to coachhousegarages.com More than just a garage More than just a garage It's a Coach House how did the Saturday Sports Show ring in the new year? By bringing you even better sports conversation in 2012. More scores, more local discussion, and a better mix of guests than anyone else. Combine that with ample knowledge of the teams you love, and you'll reserve more than one preset for AM 940. The perfect New Year's resolution? Not missing the Saturday Sports Show. Only on WMIX and online at MyWithersRadio.com. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. Daily schedules, scores, and more. Like WMIX Sports on Facebook. Back to the showcase on WMIX. Welcome back to Sester Blair High School, where we have seen an outstanding basketball game in high school girls basketball. In overtime, Goreville beat Sester Blair Waltonville 54 to 50. This is Sester Auto Body Post Game Show. Sometimes things happen in automobile that are beyond your control. When they do, take your vehicle to Sester Auto Body. They get you on the road quicker and in showroom condition. Sessor Auto Body, 602 South Park in Sessor. Danny Swinski, Chris, you go alongside. And Chris, this was a game that lived up to all the hype before we got here tonight, and maybe a little bit more. It did. It makes you wonder what's to come in this rematch on January 30th. Yeah, it is. And we will be there at Goreville for this rematch on January 30th. Before we get to that and the upcoming schedule here on WMIX, I'll turn over to Mr. Hugo for the scoring and stats on this one. Sure, it's, it's interesting, obviously, when you have that extra frame to figure in there. But for the second half, Goreville was 6-23 of from the inside, made them 13-47 of for the game for 28%. From the outside, they were 3-7 of seven in the second half. All three of their attempts 
from beyond 19-9 came in the second half. They were 3 of 11 for the game for 27%. Overall from the floor, they were 16 of 58 for 28%. So you kind of wonder how they won this game shooting only 28%. They were 20 of 39 from the free throw line for 51%. So anytime you get 20 points from the stripe, uh, obviously you've done something something very, very well there in your trips to the line. And that said, for the Lady Red Devils, from the inside for the second half, they were 5 of the 19. 13 of 38 for the game for just 34% after shooting 42% there in the first half. They were 0 of 2 from the outside in the second half, 2 of 7 for the game for 29%, making them 15 of 35 from the floor for 43%. From the charity stripe, they were 18 of 30 for 60%. Taking a look now at your rebounds, the Lady Devils had 36 rebounds compared to 33 for Goreville. Their rebounds were pretty balanced, 16 offensive and 17 defensive, while the Lady Devils had 26 defensive boards compared to 10 on the offensive glass. Turnover disadvantage, we fell to Cesar Valeria Waltonville, 34 to 28. Now we'll take a look at your individual scores tonight. The Red Devils had two in double digits. They were led by Chelsea Miller's game high 18. They had 13 from Ray Lappin, nine from Tasha Dore, four from Michaela Williams, three from Rachel Marlowe, and two from Bailey Jones, in addition to one from Megan Eskew, to get them 50 points. For the Black Cats, they were led by Jessica Wright's 15 points. They had nine from Tiffany Shadowin, eight from Allison Webb, three from Shelby Miller. Oh, excuse me, I missed eight from Madison Cavins, three from Shelby Miller, three from Haley Darnell, two from Marbia Martin, and through my sloppy book, two from Allison Sullivan. That gives us our final score of 54-50, Goreville over Cesar Valeria Waltonville in OT. With that said, we'll step out for our final break here on the Cesar Auto Body Post Game Show. When we come back, we will pick Crossroads Community Hospital Player of the Game when this one is done. Or when we come back to break, I should think the game's over. You're listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX. On November 5th, Community First Bank and the First State Bank of Dix officially partnered to better serve our customers and our community. Hi, I'm Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. We welcome all our new friends to the Community First family. And I'd like to personally invite you to call, log in, or drop by any of our five locations to learn more about Jefferson County's only true, locally owned community bank. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. This is 50,000 watts of the award-winning Jefferson County Basketball Showcase on WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion, O'Fallon, a Withers Broadcasting Superstation. Welcome back to Sessler High School. One final time on the Sessler Auto Body Post Game Show. Hey, it reminds you to drive safe on the way home from the night's game. Next time you have an accident, see the collision toes of Sessler Auto Body. 602 South Park Sessler as they will get you back on the road fast. And Chris, uh, on the break, we had a unanimous decision on who the player of the game will be for tonight's game. Oh, Chelsea Miller with her game high 18 points did what she could to keep them in this game and keep them ahead, but ultimately a four foul just came up a little bit short. Uh, honorable mention, of course, would go to Ray Lappin for her 13 points. Both of them had spectacular games, but Chelsea Miller just kind of had the edge. Chelsea Miller is your Crossroads Community Hospital player of the game. Crossroads Community Hospital is more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. And, Chris, we wrap this one up. we get a few hours off. We'll come back. Busy weekend starting tomorrow on WMIX as far as games go. Oh, yeah. So tomorrow, count, okay. tomorrow counts for the weekend, I guess. Well, I count it's it the circle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tomorrow night, obviously, we have the Mount Vernon Lady Rams hosting the Carpdale Terriers. That'll be about a 7.30 pregame uh, with a 6.15 traditional JB start from Shag Non Jim. Then, of course, you also have Friday night a trip to Carbondale for the Mount Vernon Rams. We'll have that one for you. Then the Heron Tigers come to town for the Woodlawn Cardinals. We'll have that one from Size Gymnasium as well. The Lady Rams and Rams broadcast live streaming video, of course, online at mywithersradio.com. Audio only from the Size Gymnasium up there on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. Then it's a busy week of midwinter tournaments, but if you want to know where we're going to be come midwinter time, just tune into Saturday Sports Show 808 until 10 o'clock, AM 940 online at mywithersradio.com for the Saturday Sports Show. 
every Saturday morning after the 8 o'clock news. And that will wrap it up. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, Maybe the AFC and NFC Championship games. That's a couple weeks away yet. A couple weeks. Got a divisional round this week. Okay, then. No need to worry Two about weeks that weeks is the conference championship game. So, ah, come on. Lots of sports going on here. Working on recoiling my headset. I noticed. It got off a link, and it's making me mad. Well, now, speaking of getting off the air, well, that's what we need to do is we need to get out of here because they have kicked on the blowers here at Sessler High School to clean the bleachers. Usually that's the sign to clear the gym. Right. They don't turn the light. In places we go, if the lights don't get turned off one by one, then the blowers come on to clean the bleachers. Lights off just at home, typically. So we're going to wrap it up here this evening for Chris Hugo. For Avery, Avery Barton back in the studio, pushing all the buttons. I'm Dennis Winston signing off tonight in overtime. Corville 54, Seth Surfler, Waltonville 50. Thanks for listening, and good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase, sponsored by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. The Jefferson County Basketball Showcase is also sponsored in part by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. The Collision Pros at Cesar Auto Body, Newell Furniture, and the General Store in Woodlawn, Ren Lake College. It's time. Visit your virtual counselor at rlc.edu and by Coach House Garages, Ford Square, King City Chrysler. You can count on us. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. State Farm Agent Scott Owens. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And People's National Bank. For inside information before, during, and after the game, follow us on Twitter at 94sports or like WMIX Sports on Facebook. We are your home for news, talk, sports, and today's hot country. WMIX, 